Buenos días a todos. Bienvenidos al Concilio de las Ciudades. En la cámara estamos casi los en la ruta del Concilio de la Ciudad. Son las 10, 10 de la mañana y tenemos a ser menos presentes. Gracias. Buenos días a todos. Bienvenidos al Consejo de Chambers y bienvenidos a la Junta de City Council for today, Friday, viernes, septiembre 12 de 2003. The City Council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Meetings are open to the public, and we do invite you to join us. For members of the public and able to attend council meetings, we can be viewed live on your cable station, channel 35. We can also be viewed live via webcast from the city's homepage or heard via council phone. Hardness, Garcetti, Gro, Han, Labange, Ludlow, Miskowski, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Smith, Villaregosa, Weiss, Sign, Padilla, 10 members present, and a quorum is present. Thank you very much. The council is officially in session, and for both members of the council and members of the public, uh, let me welcome you back. This is our first council meeting in a week. The council stood in recess earlier this week to uh, allow members to participate in the League of California Cities Conference. So we do have quite a lengthy agenda as well as a number of uh, special presentations and introductions. So unless there's an objection from uh, the council, what I'd like to do is proceed as follows. Uh, allow for Ms. Perry to begin with her first presentation. And at the conclusion of Ms. Perry's presentation, we can go through the agenda and approve items on consent. Matters called special will be held under desk until the conclusion uh, of presentations. And if there's any special requests or objections, I'll hear from you during Ms. Perry's presentation. At this time, let me hear, let me recognize Councilmember Perry. 
Thank you very much, Mr. President. I would like to introduce a man who is doing wonderful things in our community. For five years, Kathy Powell has worked to increase awareness about prostate cancer and its devastating effects on our loved ones, our fathers, our brothers, our uncles, our cousins. The Real Men Cook Foundation was established five years ago by Mr. Powell, and he has worked very hard to educate and provide early detection screenings for prostate cancer. September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. A man is diagnosed with prostate cancer every three minutes. A man dies from this disease every 13 minutes. 15 percent of these people who die will be men of color. Mr. Powell and his foundation have done great things to help educate all residents in the city of Los Angeles. I asked Mr. Powell to come here today to highlight the fact that this is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month and to commend Mr. Powell and his efforts to improve the chances for long-term survival of prostate cancer through early detection and education. There will be free screening in the 9th Council District on Saturday, September the 20th at New Hope Baptist Church at 5200, that's 5200 South Central, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And I want to thank Mr. Powell for the work that he has done and the work that he does every day to improve the lives of the people living in Los Angeles. And Mr. Powell, if you'd just, just like to say a few words. I want to thank uh, Mr. President and the council members and Councilwoman Jan Perry, who I've known for many years as well. Uh, the Real Men Cook Foundation is a nonprofit organization that promotes awareness and the importance of early detection of prostate cancer. Uh, just to give you a little brief stats, uh, five years ago, prostate cancer, uh, 180,000 men was diagnosed, 40,000 of those men died. The year 2000, 190,000 men was diagnosed and 31,000 men died. The death rate is coming down, unfortunately, among African Americans is twofold to every other ethnic group in the world. One of the things that have brought the death rate down and we really are uh, very much aware of is education, screening, not only screening for men, but education for women as well. We do this all over the city, all the time. And I want to thank really Ms. Jan Perry, Councilwoman Jan Perry, for partnering with the Real Men Cook of the New Hope Baptist Church, St. Mark, that we will be there on September the 20th. And everything that we provide in the city for screening and education is totally free. And if any of the council members wish to uh, have a screening, just give my office a call, and we'll be more than willing to accommodate you in any way that we can. Thank you very much. Mr. LaBanche. Ms. Perry, thank you. I just wanted to thank you, you uh, for this recognition because prostate cancer is the most preventable cancer of all tragic cancers. And this is the month, and you brought this gentleman in for real, real men can cook. I like that. So, But everybody should have a prostate exam, especially those of us who are over 50 or near 50 or coming up to it. But I just want to thank you, and uh, public awareness for public health is so important. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Perry. And colleagues, before proceeding to our next presentation, uh, as I mentioned, let's uh, go through the agenda, dispense with consent items, call items special, and then return to presentations. Madam Clerk, for start of business, please. Approval of the minutes. Ms. Perry moves. Mr. LeBond seconds. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Mr. Zion moves and Mr. Cardenas seconds. Uh, before we begin the regular agenda, Mr. President, there are several items that have been requested to be continued. Item number 10, the city attorney has requested that that matter be continued to September 30th for a new ordinance. Colleagues request to continue item number 10. Is there any objections? Seeing none, item 10 is continued. And also a request on item number 47 uh, on behalf of Council Member Hunt to continue that matter to Tuesday, September 16th. Colleagues request to continue item number 47. Mr. LeBond, do you object? 
Or two and so is 12 to be continued. It's the request of Martin Ludlow. Okay, 47 and 12 as well. Is there any objection on 47? Seeing none, 47 is continued. We have now requests on item 12 for a continuance. Mr. Labanche, to the next council meeting, or for how long? To the next council meeting, also Tuesday, September 16th. Seeing no objection, item 12 is continued. Next item. And also request item number 20, excuse me, 121 uh, from council member Perry to receive and file that matter. Colleagues request to receive and file item 121. Also without objection, item 121 is received and filed. Uh, item number, there is a uh, commissioner on today's agenda. Item number 11 is confirmation of the reappointment of Annie Cho to the Board of Water and Power. Commissioners, do you wish to take that matter first? Uh, let's, uh, we'll take the matter first after I have call special. Okay. On the regular agenda, agenda items noticed for public hearing. Item number one is a street lighting district in Council Districts 2 and 6, and the uh, Street Lighting Division has uh, submitted an amending motion that would lower the estimated assessments on all the properties. There are no cards. Okay, we do not have cards at item number one, a request for members of the public to address the council, uh, therefore satisfying the public hearing. Members should be heard on item number one. On item number one, seeing no request to speak, Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. That being an ordinance carries over for a second reading. Next item. Uh, next item, Mr. President, items two through seven are items also public hearing items, and council should open the hearings and continue the hearings and ordinances to October 3rd. On items two through seven, I do not have requests from members of the public to address the council. We shall therefore deem the public hearings open and without objection continue to October 3rd, three weeks from today. Item, item number eight is the next item. It's a uh, 2000 brush clearance appeal in Council District 3, and the recommendation of the fire department is to waive the assessment. Okay. Colleagues, item number eight is now before us, and I do not have requests from members of the public to address the council. Are the members wishing to call this item special? Item number eight. Seeing none, let's open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Item number nine is also a public hearing item. It's communication from the city attorney and ordinance regarding East Valley Animal Shelter. Okay. Item number nine now before us, and without request from members of the public to address the council, we move to uh, council discussion. Anybody wishing to call this item special? Seeing none, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That being an ordinance, carries over for a second reading. Item 11 is the appointment of a commissioner. We're holding that on the desk. Next the, item, please. The next item from the present would be items which public hearings have been held, items 12 through 24. Items 12 through 24 now before us. Item 12 has been continued. Item 13 through 24 now before us. Members wishing to call any specials. Items 13 through 24, any specials. Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Those are approved unanimously. Next item, please. Next items are items for which public hearings have not been held, 25 through 125, and uh, 10 votes are required for consideration of those items. Okay. Uh, without objection, items 25 and 125 uh, considered by the City Council today. Uh, we do have cards on item 116. Uh, let's call that item special to hear from members of the public. On the balance of the items, we do not have requests from members of the public to address the Council. We shall deem the public hearings open and closed. To call any specials, I miss 25. Mr. Zayn. 42, 43, and 44. 42, 43, and 44. Call special, Mr. Zayn. I imagine those are related and subject matter. We can consider those concurrently. Any other specials? Items 25 through 125. Seeing none. On the balance of the items, Madam Clerk, please open the roll. I have 45 calls special by Mr. Lavanche. Roll is still open. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 eyes. 
Those are approved. Están aprobados. And the ordinances will go over for one week to the Item 530, our ordinances in Duke County will for a second reading. Item 47 has previously been continued. Item 21 was received and filed. And let's please send item 46 Next item. Uh, items, uh, notice for public hearings, item 126 and 127. Those are both uh, determinations of public convenience or necessity, and both uh, items are recommended for granting the application. The motion is required on those two. Okay, colleagues, items 126 and 127 are now before us. A, uh, public hearing uh, is required, and I do not have requests from members of the public to address the council on these items, so the public hearings are therefore satisfied. We do need motions on 126, 127. Item 126, a matter in Mr. Zeiss district. He calls that matter special. Do I have a motion on item 127? And that's in council district 11. Let's call that matter special. And that concludes the agenda except for the items called special. Okay. Uh, returning now to the presentation segment of our agenda, uh, for next presentation, let me recognize Mr. Smith. And while he comes to the podium, Mr. Garcetti, for a brief introduction. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I just wanted to uh, welcome to our council chambers today a uh, class of uh, students from UCLA's uh, sociology department led by Professor Russell. And if you guys would like to stand up for a second and be recognized by the city of Los Angeles, welcome to the city council chambers and thank you for coming in. I think they already took off. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Mr. Padilla, you wish to join us on this, I believe? Ladies and gentlemen of the council, I'm very pleased to present to us uh, Jennifer Barber today. Uh, Jennifer Barber is a 20-year-old who became the first woman from Los Angeles ever to win a Golden Gloves Award National Championship. During the process, Jennifer uh, upset two top-seeded fighters to win the most outstanding boxer of the tournament award. What makes this really most amazing is she, is ten, she had 10 victories and only two losses in just one year of boxing, her first year. She hopes to join the women's first Olympic uh, exhibition boxing tournament in the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens, uh, Greece, which we hope will happen. If not, we'll certainly try and get her in the next Olympics. But uh, she's going to try and join the first exhibition of women's boxing in the Olympics. And she is crowned a favorite. She, uh, wherever she goes, the people cheer her. They, they love her uh, as a, a fighter. She has a large following around the country. Her coach, Benny the Jets, Urquidez, calls her the people's choice. And the audiences, wherever she goes, really love her. Uh, she's won a, a national championship, a very unique uh, opportunity for Los Angeles to have a, women, a woman win this great award. And we're very proud of her. And I know Mr. Padilla wishes to join me in the conference also. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Even though Jennifer made it in your district, I think we share our pride uh, and excitement about Jennifer and her new career. And as many boxing fans around Los Angeles and around the country are uh, preparing for a fight tomorrow between Oscar De La Hoya and Shane Mosley, let's not forget uh, the pioneers in boxing, especially uh, in women's boxing. As uh, Councilmember uh, uh, Smith mentioned, she's the 2003 National Golden Glove World Champion, the first from Los Angeles County, a, a recent uh, a prize she brought back from Chicago. Chicago. But she's much more than just a boxer. And this is why I'm so excited about her recognition in council this morning. Uh, she is a Los Angeles native. Uh, she is a death studies major at Cal State University Northridge in the San Fernando Valley. She works as a counselor at Camp Charisma at Fernandez Park in Sun Valley in Mr. Carnes' district. And uh, at 5'7 and weighing, if I can say, well, you get introduced all the time, a strong 125. Uh, you pack a powerful punch. So to all the guys out there, you better be careful. Uh, really, we want to congratulate uh, Jennifer not only on all her success in the ring at such a young age, uh, but for my part, uh, all her success outside of the ring and the work that she's done with the community. Uh, she's an inspiration to the community. She's an inspiration to her family. And one of the things that uh, I know she's proud of and, and speaks regularly is uh, it's no uh, coincidence uh, that she's taken on death studies as a major. Uh, both her parents 
uh, are hard of hearing, but nonetheless, that hasn't kept them uh, from motivating Jennifer, from attending her bath and cheering her on uh, and being there by her side at each uh, and every step of the way. You're an inspiration to young women. You're an, inspe you're an inspiration to this council, and sometimes we rumble uh, in here, uh, but you're, I think, a lot better at it, uh, and uh, certainly uh, demonstrated it with uh, significant pride and style. We're very proud of you, Jennifer. Congratulations. And I don't know if you want to introduce your folks and maybe say a few words. Thank you. Um, right here is my mom. Her name is Victoria. I brought my coach, Stan Ward, right here. Uh, my boyfriend, Daniel. My sister, Lene, she plays basketball at COC. My best friend, Lucky, my niece, and my nephew, Marcia and Mark. I just want to say thank you to everybody. And I do fight next month in Lincoln Park. So if you guys want to come check me out, you guys can check me out. It's local. Yeah. So come check me out. Thank you very much, Council Members Smith and Padilla. Uh, this time, I'd like to recognize Council Member Labange for presentation. Good morning, uh, members. Mr. Garcetti, how are you? May I proceed? Very well, Mr. Lebanon, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to proceed at this moment here. Talk about, I'm sure that young lady there made her way through the Los Angeles Park System. And one of the great parts of the Los Angeles Park System is our Ranger program. And they just uh, truly uh, increased their focus and awareness on the uh, program to have an interpretive educational unit uh, within the Rangers. And they've had a very successful program uh, to contribute for a articulated focus on making people understand what chaparral is, what native plants are, uh, trails, hiking, safety. All that is so important because we live in a great basin. And this great Los Angeles basin, bounded by the Great Angeles National Forest, swoops right through our 300 plus parks, all the way out to the coast in San Pedro and out on the west side. But our rangers cover so much area, they thought it was very important to have this interpretive program. And our chief ranger, Ranger David Aguirre, is going to speak. And Jimmy, I want to call on you. And Mark just uh, came flying through the door as well. So please welcome for some remarks, Ranger Chief David Aguirre. Thank you very much. I'd like to recognize the interpretation unit. It just shows how a small group of dedicated individuals can make a positive difference to the children of Los Angeles. Thank you very much. David, that's good. So members, as we look to our parks and the interpretive program, this is so important that our Los Angeles Park Rangers are developing that. And I also want to especially introduce Warren Deasy. Warren is the operator and owner of the world famous Historic Griffith Merry Go Round. For it was there at that merry ground in the late 1940s that Walt Disney used to take his two daughters and have them ride on that park merry go round. And Walt would stand there, kind of like this, as explained to me by Diane Disney, and visualize a place for young and old, or visualize a place for fun and entertainment, visualize what ultimately was Disneyland. Warren DC, uh, the great operator of the merry ground, participated in this program. Warren said, a few words. I'd just like to say we have a lot of cooperation from the Rangers in Griffith Park, and they're really important to us. Give them all the strength you can, please. Oh, Warren, thank you very much. Now I'm going to have a little quick roll call here. 
for Mark Mariscal, 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 our superintendent. Congratulations, Mark, for your dedication and commitment to this program. Thank you, City Attorney. Ernesto Yabara, who's right here, a great Palm Ranger. Desiree Rideau, always good to see you. Congratulations. Marie Claire Salivary. How are you, Marie? Good to see you. Jim Combs. Jim Combs. Let's give them all a big oh, hand, and yeah, folks yeah, in this great chambers here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garcetti. Thank you, Mr. Labonge. We appreciate it. Next, I'd like to recognize Councilmember Parks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to ask Mrs. Uh, Mary Jones Dark to come up. Uh, as you know, in many of our communities, uh, we have people that are involved in about everything in the community. And often, as they say, if you want something done, you get a busy person. And today, we wanted to honor a young lady that, uh, in addition to raising a family and uh, employment and all the other things that uh, most of our residents do, she's also a very active member of a variety of community organizations. She's a chairperson of our Community Impact Advisory team. She's also a member and co-chair of the 8th District Empowerment Congress, and she's the president of the Baldwin uh, Village Community in Action, and she's a member of the Jim Gilliam Advisory Board, one of our local parks. And so I just wanted to have her and her family here today to honor her for her participation and really to thank her for what she's done uh, in the past, but really to thank her what she's going to do in the future as she continues to be a mainstay of community activism in the 8th District. We also have a special surprise for her because we also want in the City Council Chambers to wish her a happy birthday. And so... I'd like Mary to come up and make some comments. Oh, uh, <laughs> I didn't know about the birthday part. I'm 39 today. You can all laugh if you want to. But I'd like to thank City Council and, of course, Mr. Parks. And I'd like to introduce my family. This is my beautiful daughter, Mia. This is Ariel. She's 10 years old. She attends Crescent Heights Elementary School. This is Amanda. She's a senior at Hamilton High School. This is Aaron. She's a 10th grader at Hamilton High School. These are my Talbert family. And I just want to uh, thank the council today and, of course, Mr. Parks for this uh, wonderful honor today. And it's always a pleasure to get uh, an award for doing something that you love and something that you really can't um, do without. Because I believe if you live in a community that you have a responsibility to do something in that community to enhance the quality of life. And I'd also just like to say that in as much as Mr. Parks is relatively new to City Council, he is not new to the community of Baldwin Village. Uh, Mr. Parks has been working with us uh, for a number of years, coming into Baldwin Village, giving us ideas, coming to talk to our community about things that we could do to help ourselves. Because we rely on city agencies, but we feel that it's our community. If something needs to be done, we get it done. I didn't realize I was doing so many things. I'm tired a lot, but I just didn't realize I was a member of so many things, but it's just that I like being on the front line and along with my community, and I'd like to say hello to Baldwin Village, of course, and without the community behind me, actually, I can do nothing. I can do nothing without the community, and I do appreciate Marsha, Powell, and O.C. Nelson, and, and Lou, and all of the other people that's there in the community assisting and helping and doing everything that we can do, and we do have a meeting coming coming up on Wednesday, so come out and join us at Hillcrest Elementary School, 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you very much for our final presentation. The chair recognizes Mr. Villarregosa.
Mr. President, uh, members, I have the honor today of um, presenting uh, some proclamations. One of them is to a lifelong friend. Uh, some, she hates me to mention this. Um, some, uh, we've known each other about uh, 35 years. That means she was nine months when I met her. She's an award-winning actor and writer born and raised on the east side in East LA. Uh, Ms. Fernandez was nominated for a Desi Award and received the prestigious Nosotros Golden Eagle Award for her portrayal of Julie and American Me. Most recently, she was the recipient of the GLAAD Award for Outstanding Theater Production in Los Angeles for her stage play, Dementia. And I'm very pleased to acknowledge Evelina Fernandez for her dedication to the arts and to our community. I just want to thank Antonio for all your hard work for our community all these years, Antonio. And since I'm in front of the city council, I just feel like I have to say something real important. And I, I just want to encourage you not to underestimate the power of art. And in these hard times here in this city, art can take a, a juvenile and turn them into a great artist. Art can take a high school dropout like myself and turn them into a writer, a screenwriter. So please support the arts. I encourage you to do that. And also, I need to acknowledge my colleagues from the Latino Theater Company, our artistic director, Jose Luis Valenzuela. Richard Coca, Sal Lopez, and Jeffrey Rivas, and my mom, Esperanza, and my brother, Hank Fernandez. Thank you very much. Another very talented artist, uh, Yolanda Gonzalez, uh, the daughter of immigrant parents. Let's give her a big hand. The daughter of immigrant parents and the youngest of six children, uh, a Chicana who's exhibited worldwide in Japan, Russia, Scotland, Africa, and France. She takes the heart and soul of her culture with her around the world, and it's an honor to recognize Miss Gonzalez today as well. I'd like, to, I'd like to thank you for having me here today uh, for Council Member Antonio Villaregosa. I would like to thank my parents, Leopoldo Gonzalez and Yolanda Gonzalez, for all the support that they've given me and my family that is here today and my husband. I'd like for you to please keep an eye out to a project uh, with Inner City Arts where I've been working for 11 years and uh, Greyhound on 7th Street. We're going to be doing some beautification here in Los Angeles. The mural will be unveiled in January. January. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Yolanda and Evelina. Now we have uh, the honor, if we can bring our three young students here, the honor of um, acknowledging and recognizing three young people, three young students who uh, are here today because we're recognizing their talent and creativity. They helped to create the magazine just for kids to help raise money for college. They do all the research and the interviews for the magazine, so members, I hope when they ask you for an interview, you'll grant them one. On behalf of the 14th Council District in the City of Los Angeles, I want to recognize your outstanding work. Uh, and with us today are Samantha Rene Ramos. She's a third grade student at Our Lady of Guadalupe School in El Sereno. Right. Say hello to everybody. We're so glad. I would like to thank our sponsors, Della Good, David Lozarica, Tenet Health of Lisa, um, our mentors, and our family. She's running for office. Mr. Cardenas, I just want you to know she may, uh, Mr. Padilla, watch out for this young lady. She's running for office. She's the co-founder and co-editor and chief of Just for Kids. You are one articulate, bright, beautiful young child. Congratulations. And also,
also with us a sixth grade student, uh, Jacob uh, Daniel Diaz uh, at Las Palmas, Las Palmas Middle School, who lives in Highland Park in the 14th Council Manor District. Congratulations, Jacob. Would you like to say something, Jacob? Uh, can I make a proposal? It's okay. Chambers. Um, Make a proposal. Yeah, I will not propose. You need a second. I know about seconds. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it okay with every kid, every school district, for every Friday school, 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 school to get that day off? <laughs> I'd like to know if uh, every kid in every school district, school district can get the day off on Friday. Thank you very much. That's a great proposal. <laughs> Friday. Obviously, to work, to work on the magazine, right? Yeah. See, there we go. Yeah, it's there. And finally, last but not least, a seventh grade student at St. Marianne de Padres Catholic School who lives in Pico Rivera again. One of the young people who helped co-found and co-edit Just for Kids magazine, Megan Aguilar. I'd like to thank Councilman Wilsa for presenting us with this award. And um, we're looking for sponsors for our TV show. Um, we should be interested. And that's it. Yes, oh, thank you. Gracias. You heard her. We're looking for sponsors, everybody. And so we're just proud of these young children. Let's give them a big hand. Just for kids. An example of the, you know, as we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, an example of the talent, uh, the energy, the vitality in this great community. Thank you so much. We're really proud of you. It's now uh, my honor to you know, provide a, a few, <laughs> three other uh, proclamations. <laughs> Teresa Rosa Jaramillo. Uh, Teresa is a local Teresa artist. She's a painter and a designer of sculptures. She was born in 1938 in the small town. I'm never supposed to give your age. Um, in the small town of Merida, Yucatan, Mexico, she emigrated to Los Angeles in 1960. She's married and had six children. She exhibits her work throughout the community, including the Al Serino Library and the Plaza de la Raza. Uh, congratulations, felicitaciones, señora. Aquí estamos. That's great. Felicidades. aquí por un. And now I have a, an opportunity to present another fourth generation Angelino. Beats me by one. Uh, my tocayo, Tony Dominguez. Tocayo means we have the same name. Uh, Mr. Dominguez is a fourth generation Angelino. In 1994, he started producing piñatas for retail businesses and expanded his services to paper mache. He's a role model local artist. I'm proud to be working with uh, Mr. Dominguez and Mr. Calidad in this year's Dia de los Muertos celebration, everybody. It's going to be the most phenomenal event that on the east side in a long time. And these two folks are hoping to make it a reality. Congratulations. And finally, uh, Armando Figueroa. Armando is a loving husband and proud father of three boys. And always reminds you of that. Uh, he tirelessly gives his time and energy to the Al Serino community. He's an important part of Al Serino's Unity Fair. And he's a member of Sol de Alegría, a prominent band in the region. And we honor you today, too. Thank you all so much for your indulgences. This is a great opportunity to celebrate the wealth and, uh, as I said, the energy and uh, the great uh, people that live in the 14th Councilmanic District. Thank you very much, Mr. Villaraigosa.
at this time, I'd like, like to recognize Mr. Padilla uh, on an item that uh, okay. he would like to discuss on today's agenda. Thank you, Madam Chair. What is considered the, I believe it's item 21, the Immigrant Worker Finger Right Resolution. Uh, as we can do the consent agenda, nobody called it special, but I know several members uh, want to be heard on it, uh, so I'd ask for reconsideration on item 21. Is there any objection for reconsideration on item 21? Seeing none, si open the roll on the motion for reconsideration. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 12 by. That is approved. Esta we will now take up item number 21 and let me recognize Mr. Padilla. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Colleagues, this is item number 21, the resolution uh, that I have co presented along with Council Member Villaragosa and signed on to uh, by as many council members as the city attorney would allow us. Uh, for, uh, as a reminder, uh, the Immigrant Worker Freedom Right, as you know, is, your, is the effort being organized by uh, organized labor, community groups, religious groups, uh, immigrant rights activists throughout Los Angeles and throughout the country. And September 20th, next Saturday, we will see a delegation of workers leaving Los Angeles en route to Washington, D.C. and to New York, uh, modeled after and in the same spirit as the Freedom Rights, the original Freedom Rights. Uh, that this country saw in the 1960s that brought back to national attention uh, the very important issues and efforts to improve civil rights in this country to end the inequalities and injustices, uh, that racism and segregation uh, contaminated this country's history with. And before I speak any further, I do want to introduce two of the original freedom writers who are here with us today and who have spoken to you at a press conference uh, about their own. And Dr. Robert Singleton, if you would uh, please stand back. We have a council. We have a city. I want to thank you not only for being here, but for the wonderful courage that you demonstrated uh, in the 60s and since then, and the wonderful model that you have allowed these immigrant workers uh, to follow uh, as we, uh, through this immigrant freedom work, uh, immigrant worker freedom right, try to use the same model to bring back the national spotlight. Back to the national focus, the issues that are impacting immigrant workers, the issues that this freedom right is hoped to promote is, number one, a clear and fair path to citizenship for workers who are working in this country, paying taxes in this country, or being law in this country, and contributing to our society. Second, due to these efforts, we hope to strengthen the reunification of families. So many immigrant workers are unable to visit their families on the other side of the border or their families who are not able to visit their families because of the laws that are currently on books. In addition to that, we're utilizing this immigrant worker freedom right to create a new way of promoting defending and protecting the rights of the people who are not able to visit their families. So many immigrant workers working in the United States pay taxes in the United States and contribute to our society. So many immigrant workers working in the United States pay taxes in the United States and contribute to our society. So many immigrant workers working in the United States pay taxes in the United States and contribute to our society. On a daily basis, are subject to poverty, subject to discrimination, subject to abuse, and because of the laws that exist in this country. Colleagues, yesterday was September 11th. And we all know the emotions that September 11th invokes. We know the memories of the incidents from two years ago. Let me remind us that prior to September 11th, 2001, we had a presence of the Supreme Court. We had a presence of the Supreme Court. We had a presence of the Supreme Court. We had a presence of the Supreme Court was talking about better treatment for the Latino community, who was talking about immigrant workers, immigrant Americans. Since September 11th, we haven't heard anything. We've seen a White House go silent as it pertains to immigrant workers' rights and issues. Not only that, I believe that the federal government has taken steps backwards as it pertains to the advocacy of the rights of immigrant workers in this country. Abuse, discrimination, under the guise of homeland security, calling enough is enough. And we want to not hear it. We want to hear it. 
Muy bien, más sobre los esfuerzos que se están poniendo. Pero lo que me ha dicho por todo el país, especialmente aquí en Los Ángeles, y más diversa ciudad en el país, una ciudad con más de 40% de población de inmigrantes, inmigrantes por todo el mundo, no solo México, América Latina, de todo el mundo, contribuyendo a nuestra ciudad, contribuyendo a nuestra economía, contribuyendo a nuestra sociedad. Y eso es lo que los trabajos de los grandes los derechos y espero que este consiga tenga la visión progresiva y liderazgo de para recibir el soporte de los derechos de los con nuestra asociación y con nuestras palabras, con nuestro dinero y con el gobierno con la delegación maravillosa que está puesta para el padre de Los Ángeles de septiembre 20 en Washington para el Capitolio en la Casa Media y la sombra de la estatua de la ley, el símbolo de migrantes hoyos en los Estados Unidos para llevar esta mesa. Muchas gracias por el tiempo y aprecio de su consideración. Muchas gracias, señor presidente, por ese buen discurso. Creo que puso clavo en la cabeza que estuvieron en este banal por poner su cabeza en el nombre de la libertad 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 de la but also in, 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 the trailblazers who are here with us today who are able to set forth that great path for all of us to follow. Um, colleagues, Mr. Padilla mentioned 9-11, and I think one of the most moving uh, tributes and um, one of the most moving uh, memories about the tragedy that happened on 9-11 was looking at the workers who were in the World Trade Center. We know the workers who responded to the scene. We also know the workers who were the white-collar workers who were there, but we also know that Up at top of Windows of the World, we had uh, workers who were represented by the HRE, uh, who lost their life that day uh, simply because they went to work like so many other people in the World Trade Center Towers. Um, wherever we go, every restaurant we go to, every hotel that we go to, every stockbrokers that we go to, every police station that we go to, everywhere that we go, we see immigrants who are making this country what it is today. They come from Africa, they come from Asia, they come from Latin America, they come from around the world, and the face of Los Angeles is indeed the face of the world. And today we stand shoulder to shoulder with the world and saying that dignity and human rights are something that everybody deserves here. This council and this city has shown that, whether it's in giving dignity to people with a matrix of consular, whether it's making sure that people can have a voice and are never moved into the shadows, where they can push down people's wages, the shadows where people are scared of ever going to the police and reporting crimes in their neighborhood, in the shadows where we keep money under mattresses instead of bank accounts, which help our economy. Let that sunlight in. That's what this ride is about. I am proud to support you all today to make sure that we can put this back on the agenda. And let me say something along the lines of what Mr. Padilla said for our national leaders. The brave national leaders that we have elected you to be. President Bush took a courageous step with Vicente Fox in putting immigration on the agenda, and he needs to keep it there as well. This will make a safer country. Once we move people out of the shadows, we can be a more secure country and looking at terrorism. But we can also be that America that we have always stood for, that that lady with her torch in the New York Harbor has always been a beacon for, saying that each one of us deserves it, whether we are tired and poor and hungry, or whether we come here on the most high-tech visa. This country needs immigrants, it is about immigrants, it will continue to be about immigrants, and let's do that in a way that brings people in instead of shutting them out. Thank you for your courage. Thank you, Mr. Garcetti. Now let me recognize Mr. Villaraigosa, the author of this motion. Mr. President, uh, members, I rise today for the immigrant freedom rights. And I do as the son of an immigrant on my father's side. From that, I understood from the very beginning what makes Los Angeles different. Think for a moment, every one of you look around the chambers. All of us came from somewhere. Everyone here is a resident of the United States. Everyone here is a resident of the United States. All of us came from somewhere. Uh, none, very few of us were born here. Most of us are the sons of immigrants who slaves who came to this country. And we know what a great country this is. It's a great country.
country because the immigrants have created the wealth of this country. The immigrants have built the tall buildings from the twin towers to the capital to many cities from the city hall. They've been a part of the fabric of this great nation. But you have to understand that the immigrants have built the tall buildings from the twin towers to the capital to many cities from the city hall. They've been a part of the fabric of this great nation. But you have to understand that the immigrants have built the tall buildings from the twin towers to the capital to many cities from the city hall. The lack of opportunity and civil rights for African Americans and Latinos and other people of color, just like those times when we didn't have a civil rights act, many of us came together back then in the freedom rides throughout the South to bring attention to the plight of blacks in the deep south and the plight of minorities across the nation. Well, just as we did some 40 years ago, today we come together. Today, my colleague, the president of the council, and all of the colleagues here today say to this city, this state, and this country that we're here to proudly support this immigrant freedom right, to bring the attention of America to the plight of the immigrants, to bring the attention of this great nation to the contribution of the immigrants to this nation. When we, as we did yesterday, memorialize September 11th, as we think about that tragedy, we think about all the names of the people who died on that day of infamy. Many of them have rested in the kaleidoscope of the history of this great nation. Many of them have rested in the kaleidoscope of the history of this great nation. Many of them have rested in the kaleidoscope of the history of this great nation. We stand together. We say that we stand with the immigrants. I have agreed to join this freedom ride to begin the freedom ride from Los Angeles to end up in Los Angeles. Many of us have been together to go to the Congress and hold the Congress of Angeles to end up in Los Angeles. Many of us have been together to go to the Congress and hold the Congress of Angeles to end up in Los Angeles. Many of us have been together to go to the Congress and hold the Congress of Angeles to end up in Los Angeles. Many of us have been together to go to the Congress and hold the Congress of Angeles to end up in Los Angeles. Many of us have been together to go to the Congress and hold the Congress of Angeles to end up in Los Angeles. Many of us have been together to go to the Congress and hold the Congress of Angeles to end up in Los Angeles. Many of us Family reunification. We ask for family preservation. We ask for supporting the idea of the immigrants in the workplace. Have the same rights and should have the same working conditions that the rest of us. And most importantly, we ask to celebrate what made this country great and why we as Americans are proud that we come from every corner of the earth. I'm proud to be here with my sister, who I've known for three decades, Maria Elena Durasa, who would like to say a few words. Members of the City Council, we absolutely thank you for your courage because, unfortunately, that ugly head of racism and anti-immigrant is starting to come back again. And it is more important now than ever that the City Council and the leaders of Los Angeles and other cities say, we will not tolerate that any longer. And we thank you for being with us. I just want to acknowledge some of the people who are going on the ride, and one of them is a student who delivered a very important message to Congress. How are you guys doing? My name is Coach Cavallos. I come from Mission College. I'm Mission College. Uh, I myself, as an immigrant, I came from Mexico City in 1989, and I've struggled every moment of my life to to keep that freedom that I fought for and I keep fighting for. And I'm really grateful to be around with you guys and that you guys are backing us up in this freedom right. I'm kind of speechless. I'm in front of you guys, very nervous. And I got to tell you guys I'm very, very grateful for your donations, your moral support. And all those speeches that you guys give is like what I feel for my heart. I have no speech in front of me, but I'm talking to you guys from your heart. And thank you very much. So there will be... We want to encourage and uh, make sure that you all are there and that you help to get others there from your districts. Uh, Saturday, September 20th, when 140 freedom riders from Los Angeles will be leaving, and there will be a rally to send them off and to say, Los Angeles backs you up. And when you travel across this country, whether it be Shelbyville, Kentucky, or uh, Wilson, North Carolina, or Washington, Washington, D.C., this nation, and Los Angeles supports you. So please be there, Los Angeles City Hall, 10 o'clock Saturday morning. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to acknowledge.
knowledge that there are members of uh, other cities, uh, the city of Compton, the city of Commerce, and the city of West Hollywood, who passed resolutions. Barbara, you want to just bring that up real quick? The city of San Fernando. The city of San Fernando. I just ask for a couple of minutes of your indulgence. I'd like to, to say that this is very near and dear to my heart. I come from grandparents that were brought to the state of Arizona prior to the United States. From Mexico, they were Indians. Well, they needed bodies to become a state. And my family was brought to the state of Mexico. My father was never allowed to. They were looking at home, was moved from mine to mine to work. And my family was brought to the state of Mexico. My father was never allowed to. They were looking at home, was moved from mine to mine to work. And my family was brought to the state of Mexico. My father was never allowed to. So this is very near and dear. My father lived and died. My father died fighting for civil rights and human rights, and I'm very proud to be part of this movement. And I thank you for the support. The city of Commerce gives you all the support. Thank you. And I want to tell you that your resolution, the resolution of Compton, San Fernando, West Hollywood, Commerce, and when you approve the resolution from Los Angeles, we're going to hand deliver these and show them across the country that Los Angeles County stands on the side of immigrants and to treat all people fairly. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Let me recognize Council Member Perry. Thank you, Council Member Perry. Thank you, thank you very much, Madam Chair. And I just wanted to say thank you to Maria Elena and all the people here assembled today, and to say uh, that I was uh, pleased to be supportive of this, not only in uh, word but in deed, and to make sure that the logistics were put together and that the ride commences peacefully and in an organized manner, and that you all know how much we support you because you're out there fighting for all our families. So thank you, and uh, Godspeed. Mr. Cardenas. I support, I support this resolution, resolution, and I'd like to say a few words of what it means to me and many people throughout this great country. Immigrants, immigrants. My father, my father, first here in this country as a migrant farm worker, worker de, who picked the food so that we could eat it. Then he became a laborer es, uh, to build the roads and bridges and buildings that we now work and live in. And then a gardener, beautifying the landscape of this beautiful community. My mother raised 11 children. Andres and Maria Cardenas has 11 children. And she still found the time to change the diapers and cares for the children of our neighbors. Please consider Miguel, Maria Elena, the leaders of this march. Please consider dedicating this immigrant workers' freedom ride to the millions of men and women who have given so much to this country that haven't been able to live and who are now gone, like my parents. They weren't able to live to see the dreams that this immigrant workers' freedom ride is going to press on. They endured injustices. They endured inequities. And they endured a lack of dignity and respect for them. But they never complained. Don't let another week, month, year, year decade or lifetime pass before this country proves that it is great and it is willing to treat every single person in this country equally as we all dream that this country will become. This immigrant workers' freedom ride is about as American as anything this country could ever endure. And I hope and pray that you are welcome across this country and on your final destination and that we see true laws passed in Washington, D.C. for the dignity and respect of everyone who contributes so much to this wonderful, great, prosperous country of ours. Thank you for this, for enduring this. Thank you for embarking on this. And thank you so much for your leadership to the workers and the people who have organized this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Reyes. 
I stand shoulder to shoulder with my colleagues. Con mis colegas. For me, it's Para mí es great to hear colleagues, oír colegas, council members, del council. who are beginning to show, beginning to articulate what has happened to our parents, what has happened to our neighbors, what has happened to our communities. Our communities. That voice has been silent too long. Silenciada mucho tiempo. And listening y to the echoes de los of our leaders de los of the 60s, there were very real human real issues at that time. And those human issues still exist today. Hoy. And to be in this position, to have this opportunity, opportunity, to stand at this microphone, in este microphone, is because of the sacrifices that were made by many, many people in the civil rights movement, immigrant workers' movement. It's for that reason that I feel proud to be here. But just as important is the fact that we as immigrants, we reflect the world economy. If this country is a country that is ever going to reach the world economy, that level where we're going to be able to pull up, if this country is ever going to reach that level where we're going to be able to pull up, if this country is ever going to reach that level where we're going to be able to pull up, if this country is ever going to reach that level where we're going to be able to pull up, the primary role because we reflect the world. We reflect the world economy. We reflect our international relationships, our ability to build up the countries in South America, Indonesia, Africa, Africa India, Asia. It's here. And we've said this time and time again. Every city, every big city in this world has the second biggest population in Los Angeles. Angeles. So I want to thank the labor leaders for their effort. I want to thank you, those of you who are traveling that bus, to give this demonstration, the symbolic gesture, the contribution of immigrants. It's painful to see our young people getting A's, studying hard, carrying two jobs, and coming to a ceiling because they're an immigrant. They can't go to college, they can't go to junior college. So what are other options? We need to send a message, we need to change those policies, and thank God we have state officials that are doing just that. So, in summary, I just want to say thank you, I just want to thank you, I just want to thank you, I just want to thank you. Entonces, en summary, I just want to say thank you. Las gracias. Hopefully, Esperemos the symbolism, el symbolismo, the effort you are demonstrating will be a role model for those to come behind us. The struggle doesn't end here. Si no it begins now. We will continue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. Gracias, Reyes. We recognize Mr. Parks. Thank you, Madam Chair. Gracias, I also Mr. rise uh, in support of this uh, motion. Resolution, resolution and particularly, and particularly uh, with Mr. Farrell, uh, Farrell prior councilman uh, for the Hayes District and one of the original uh, freedom uh, riders who is here today and Mr. Singleton who also uh, was part of that uh, historic uh, event uh, but I think it is so important that as we worked on some things in our office that we recently honored the 40th year of Martin Luther King's speech if you read his speech today and you took out the word Negro or for immigrant you would have almost the identical set of circumstances. And I think it is so important that as we as a city and individuals look to the future, that we cannot think and believe that human rights is available or that we cherish them unless everyone has access to the same set of circumstances. As I mentioned in the news conference earlier, we've seen this process in this progress made. And as we thought that we were able recently to get the same set of circumstances, we saw that we were able to get the same set of circumstances and everyone would understand the we see immediately that those who have found a way to want to roll back that progress because of what they believe is a perceived danger to the country. We also see with the council reports uh, that, uh, again, a perceived danger to the country. But what's unfortunate about what we're living through is that so many people only think about immigration They do not think about immigration in other countries. But this is something we would think about the right to the rights of immigrants for everyone. And I believe that as these uh, are uh, communities in this country, our uh, community gets on those buses, goes to the east, and sends that message from the Senate or the city in the United States that hopefully the President of the government is listening, and this is something that is going well beyond time to change. And I would just like to thank the Senate for all of the phrases from Martin Luther King's speech that just came out to show you that it is as relevant as ever as we go forward in this country. And we said that in our speech, now is the time to raise 
tiempo para levantarnos hacia arriba de ese lado del país, oscuro y desagregación. El camino de luz de justicia y otro comentario no va a haber nueve. Tranquilidad, descanso en América, es el negro, se le de derechos ciudadanos, no podemos caminar solos. Déjenos no, no, igual lo de desesperación, y como todos recordamos esta historia, la última frase, cuando dejamos la libertad, dejamos la libertad, para todo mundo, para todo Hamlet, para todo Estado, y todas las ciudades que podamos aumentar, para todos los hijos de los judíos y los judíos, Protestantes y católicos podemos estar agarrando mano y cantar las palabras de Dios espiritual y real, fiarlas. Yo creo que es esto que todo bien refleja donde estamos hoy. Que vamos a tener toda una población de inmigrantes libres al final. Gracias, Mr. Parks. Gracias, Mr. Parks. Thank you, Madam President, uh, and I don't need to repeat all of the, I think, eloquent uh, remarks from my colleagues about how important this immigrant ride is. And I apologize I was not able to be there this morning for your press conference, but was there in spirit um, and believe that this is such an important issue and one in which, as we recognized, uh, we all are either immigrants ourselves or sons and daughters of immigrants, and that this ride is going to, I think, highlight how important immigrants are to the future of this city and the future of this nation. So I look forward to hopefully being there next Saturday to um, encourage that ride and that 140 people who have committed themselves. And thank Ria Elena for all of your leadership on this issue and the many people who are going to participate in that ride. Congratulations. We'll see you next Saturday. And a uh, big highlight for immigrant rights. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Girl. Let me recognize to close the debate, Councilmember Padilla, and then we'll vote on the motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Trata de decirse, se ha dicho, pero yo estoy inspirado en este momento por este debate y discusiones que he visto y he oído tomar lugar en la Cámara en Sacramento, cuando los legisladores a veces no pueden ayudar. Y si no hay muchas lenguas, muchas veces no puede ser números, pero yo también no estoy para ver como es hijo de migrantes. Cuando hablamos de migrantes, no es un concepto extranjero, que están muchos aquí en el concilio. No tenemos aquí que no fueron por migrantes, trabajadores y migrantes, yo no soy excepción. Yo era mi historia anterior, mis padres emigran de este país, de México. Mi padre, cocinero, miembro de los templados del hotel y el restaurante de la Unión de Empleados. Mi madre limpiaba casas, trabajó en mi gran trabajador, y yo siguiendo el sueño. Yes. For that reason, and in their spirit, that I want to say the following. Este es un gran día this is a great day para la ciudad de Los Angeles, the of Los Angeles tomando la posición taking the position por el obra de un voto the, y la obra, the, obra de una inversión the, the, en esta causa, la peregrinación nacional apoyando country, a los trabajadores inmigrantes. Reconocemos que hay más de 36 millones de inmigrantes en este país. Actualmente la ciudad de Los Ángeles tiene una población de más de 40% inmigrante de Latinoamérica, de México, pero de todas las áreas del mundo. Los asuntos que afectan a los trabajadores inmigrantes, asuntos de pobreza, asuntos de discriminación y abuso, Poverty, discrimination, discrimination en el lugar de empleo, in the place of work. También hay dificultades also, there are difficulties in obtaining the citizenship. Estos asuntos nos afectan a todos, affect us all porque todos because somos all of us who are members of a community. Y apoyar esta and causa this cause, es apoyar el esfuerzo the, the, de obtener, proteger y defender los derechos de los inmigrantes de reconocer y of respetar las contribuciones de los inmigrantes que han construido esta ciudad y este país. Y bien sabemos que van a mantener y mantener fuertes a nuestra ciudad y a este país de lo que contribuyen well, económicamente, de lo que contribuyen well, the, a nuestra sociedad, de lo que contribuyen the, the con su inversión de tener a sus invest, hijos aquí en este in país, city, country, buscando el sueño americano. Y es nuestro deber our, como gobierno uh, y como sociedad mantener el sueño americano como un sueño que se puede realizar. 
Gracias a la fuerza de los inmigrantes, gracias a su trabajo, a su fe y a su lucha para poder renovar el enfoque a nivel nacional estos asuntos. Porque también que, tra que tratemos a los inmigrantes es respetándonos a nosotros mismos. Me da mucho gusto recibirlos en este ayuntamiento y me da mucho gusto votar en favor de esta resolución. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Mr. Padilla. That now closes our discussion on the matter. Uh, members, we have item 21 before us, which is the motion to have the city put itself in a position of support of the federal legislative program for immigrant workers freedom ride and the goals that it is pursuing. Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. That matter is unanimously approved. We will send it forthwith. Thank you for those who are here. Thank you. Um, members, I think we are going to have a special presentation now on, be on behalf of the mayor. If the mayor can come, is coming forward. Uh, Where's Tracy? City Attorney, Rocky Del Cadillo, Council President Alex Padilla, members of the City Council, uh, the Mayor of San Salvador, Carlos Zamora, uh, everyone who was out here to celebrate this joyous uh, occasion, it's my honor to officially declare September 12 through October 15, 2003 as Latino Heritage Month in the City of Los Angeles. Complying with the uh, resolution of the City Council of the City of Los Angeles passed uh, in 1850, that uh, communications of the City Council be in English and in Spanish. Uh, we have the resolution in both. Uh, I might read part of it in English. Uh, we know that 38 million Americans are Latinos and Hispanic heritage, representing 13% of our nation's population, representing, uh, according to the latest estimates, 49.99% of the city of Los Angeles population, but I don't think they've checked the uh, maternity wards this morning. So I think we're right at 50 percent, and uh, whereas a pueblo de Nuestra Señora La Reina de Los Angeles was founded in 1781 by our uh, pioneering and entrepreneur Hispanic settlers, and whereas in the year 2000, we know that 12 percent of Latino population in America resides in the greater Los Angeles area, making it the number one ranked Latino county in the nation, the number two ranked Latino county in the world. Uh, and 40, as I said before, 49.99% of our population is comprised by Latinos. Uh, we know that the uh, city is one that has always honored its Latino heritage and always will. Uh, so, uh, it, uh, James K. Han, or Jaime Han, today, 
alcalde de la ciudad de Los Ángeles, en nombre de sus residentes, a través de la presente, declaro el mes del 12 de septiembre al 15 de octubre de 2003 como el mes de la herencia hispana. Gracias, Jaime, Gracias. for that uh, introduction. That's it. Yeah, it's, I get to call him. Get to call him. Yeah, then I. Certainly, it's a, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. It's, a, it's an exciting day to proclaim Latino Heritage Month. You know, this city, as the mayor pointed out in terms of numbers, is the greatest Latino city in America, and from my perspective, the greatest Latino city in the world. So it's exciting for me to be here growing in vital Latino culture that is the city of Los Angeles. We're growing in numbers up to 50%, I guess, is the official number. But also, even on our own elected body here, we've never had as many Latino electeds as we do today in the city of Los Angeles. Our culture is beautiful, uh, our culture is complex, uh, our culture is strong. I'm excited to be here to uh, participate in the uh, pro proclamation of Latino Heritage Month. And I look forward to uh, sharing with the rest of the city what is a vital culture here in Los Angeles. But I hope we celebrate this culture not only during this month, but we celebrate it every day of the year because it is a beautiful culture and it is part of what Los Angeles is. So I thank you all for, uh, uh, for uh, kicking out the month and, and being a part of this great celebration. I'd just like to give a few uh, comments in Espanol. It's for me a great honor to be here in this event so significant. Esta proclamación es una ocasión en la que celebramos nuestra herencia latina y eso me lleno de orgullo. Los Ángeles es una ciudad de no, en donde nuestra cultura se hace presente en una forma muy especial. Nuestra herencia es fuerte, vasta y muy bella. Celebremos el mes de la herencia latina con espíritu de diversidad y entusiasmo. Todos son bienvenidos a esta celebración. Gracias. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, City Attorney, uh, colleagues and members of the public. It's really a joyous, joyous occasion uh, to be here as we launch and kick off Latino Heritage Month in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, Uh, dijo Rocky del Galeo, es un gran orgullo estar aquí en el comienzo de esta gran celebración conocida como el mes de la herencia latina en la ciudad de Los Ángeles. Quisiera comenzar uh, con invitándolos a todos a, a compartir la ceremonia del de grito que se lleva, se lleva a cabo cada año uh, aquí en el centro de Los Ángeles. Este año uh, tenemos el gran placer de dar la bienvenida a Pepe Aguilar. Uh, esto es nuestro talento ofrecido uh, al público uh, para gozar sin, uh, sin cobrar. Todos están bienvenidos este lunes, el 15 de septiembre. Uh, colleagues, I want to invite everybody to one of the biggest events uh, during Latino Heritage Month, and that is the annual celebration of El Grito, uh, the celebration of Mexican independence uh, in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, it's going to take place this Monday, September 15th, on the Central City Hall. And this year, the event is bigger and bigger and better and better every year. We're pleased to announce, as a special guest, we'll have performing Pepe Aguilar. 
not only at internationally, but world renowned uh, singer from Mexico. Every year we talk about celebrating you know, Heritage Month and recognizing and respect and really appreciate the contributions of Latinos to the city of Los Angeles, to our culture, to our history, uh, and to that of the United States as a whole. Uh, but I think as the debate that preceded this presentation shows us that it's not just about recognizing the past, it's not just about remembering our history, but it's capturing that spirit and applying that same respect, that same appreciation, that same acknowledgement to struggles that exist today in the city of Los Angeles, Latinos in various circles, in the public sector, the private sector, through community groups, through religious organizations, and even through organized labor, or especially through organized labor, continue to advocate for the best interest of the Latino community and America as a whole, but to continue to play leadership roles in the civic discussions that affect the entire city of Los Angeles and the entire United States. Cada año nos reunimos para celebrar la, el mes de la herencia latina. Y cada año escuchamos uh, lo que es reconocer y apreciar la historia, las contribuciones históricas de la comunidad latina a nuestra ciudad, a nuestro país. Contribuciones a nuestra economía, contribuciones uh, culturales, económicas, Pero como escuchamos en el discurso de un asunto antes de esta presentación, no solo es cuestión de reconocer el pasado, sino preguntarnos qué estamos contribuyendo hoy, actualmente, cómo estamos contribuyendo a esta ciudad y a este país. Vemos cada día más y más liderazgo, más y más representación en el sector público, en el sector privado, con organizaciones comunitarias y especialmente con los sindicatos laborales. Es ese espíritu que debemos mantener y celebrar este mes y en, uh, durante todo el año. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very, very much. And let me introduce uh, my council colleagues who also share a few words. Council member uh, Ed Reyes, Eric Garcetti, Antonio Villaregosa, and Tony Cárdenas. Thank you, sir. I want to take my time to make a very special presentation. Members, this is Latino Heritage Month, and as such, we have an array of events going on throughout the course of the next few weeks. This Sunday, September 14th, we'll be celebrating the 19th Annual Central American Independence Parade here in Los Angeles. This parade has been a historical celebration that started 19 years ago as a committee cry for peace at a time when Central America was torn by wars and foreign interventions. Today, the parade is a manifestation of the cultural pride and human values of the brave Central American people and is organized by COFEGA. Comité de Festejos de Centroamérica. This morning, it is indeed my honor and privilege to introduce this year's Grand Marshal of the Central American Independence Parade. I'm certain many of you will recognize him, particularly you boxing fans, three-time WBC champion, Alexis Aguero. Mr. Aguero hails from the land of lakes and volcanoes, from the land of poet Ruben Dario and Augusto Cesar Sandino. Of course, I'm speaking of the beloved country of Nicaragua. Mr. Aguero won his first crown from the World Boxing Association on November 23, 1974, here in Los Angeles. His second championship from the World Boxing Council on January 28, 1978, in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and his third championship also with the Boxing Council on January 20, 1981, in London, England. Mr. Aguero will be the Grand Marshal of the Central American Independence Parade in Los Angeles this Sunday, September 14th. Welcome, Mr. Aguayo. Thank you for being with us today, and welcome. Bienvenido to City Los Angeles. Más brevemente español. Gracias a todos. Y no más quiero tomar este tiempo para darles gracias a mis padres, que son inmigrantes, que han sacrificado tanto. Estamos aquí juntos como familia celebrando una cultura tan bella y tan preciosa. Muchas gracias.
Thank you very much. Uh, gracias, Eduardo, y Piedra, y Alejandro, y Jaime. Uh, es un gran honor estar aquí con ustedes, especialmente los bomberos aquí, que representan todos los empleados latinos en la ciudad de Los Ángeles. I think it's a great honor to be here with everybody, and especially with the firefighters behind us who represent all the Latino employees of the city of Los Angeles, Angeles who make this city work. Let's give them a hand as we celebrate Latino Heritage Month as well. Uh, también, es, también es un gran honor a celebrar este mes con un gran amigo de Los Angeles, el alcalde de San Salvador, alcalde Zamora. Gracias a venir a, a nuestra ciudad. We also have the mayor of San Salvador here with us, uh, um, who's a great friend, and as we move towards increasing friendship between our cities, um, I know uh, Council Members Villaragosa and I went down to San Salvador and were able to celebrate and lay some of the groundwork for the good work of Mayor Hahn for a sister city relationship with San Salvador, and we're very much looking forward to that. Uh, I'll be very brief. Uh, as I always say uh, this time each year, the story of Los Angeles is a Latino story, but it includes all the faces in this room. Uh, los pobladores were white and black and brown and Asian, just like the city of Los Angeles today. They all just happen to speak Spanish. Um, and the Latino uh, celebration that we are embarking on this month is a celebration of world culture. It's a celebration of every race, celebration of men and women, young and old, it's a celebration of this entire city and the contributions that have been made uh, by folks who just happen to speak Spanish. Um, it means a lot to me, too, because I share that same story with so many Latino uh, Residents of Los Angeles, when my grandparents came here from Mexico, um, came straight to Los Angeles and settled here uh, in Boyle Heights. Um, and they had that, what our Lieutenant Governor calls radical Latino agenda, of just safe streets, uh, secure neighborhoods, good schools, and good jobs. And that's what we celebrate here today, is uh, the progress that we've all made together as one single city. We invite everybody uh, in this city to celebrate with us. Thank you to the mayor for the good, great hard work on this as well. And adelante. Gracias. Let me just say how proud I am to stand here with our council president, Alex Padilla, Rocky uh, Delgadillo, our city attorney with Eric Garcetti, Ed Reyes, and Tony Cardenas. In many ways, as all of the speakers have said, today is not just a, a Latino uh, launch, if you will, of uh, Latino Heritage. Month. It really is an opportunity for all of us to celebrate the diversity that has made this city great. As Eric said so well, that those 44 pobladores were African, almost half of them, half of them African, uh, European, Indian, uh, mestizo, or mixed. And in many ways, uh, over those 222 years, a lot has changed, but a lot has changed. We're more. still African, African and Asian and Indian and, Indian and European. And what we have in common is that we came here to this great city, this great city the city of the angels. And so every one of you, as you think about Latino Heritage Month, feel included. Feel a part of this great month, just as we feel a part of the African American community, a part of all of the communities that make up this city. At a time in L.A. and throughout the state when we still have to bring attention to the plight of the immigrants, to the contributions of the immigrants, let's celebrate what we have in common. Let's celebrate what we all contribute. Let's judge one another by the content of our character, not the color of our skin, not the accent, not how recently we got here. And if we can do that, this Latino heritage Month can be that opportunity uh, for all of us to celebrate what we have in common. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Council President, all of you, uh, for helping to launch this wonderful month. Take a brief moment, moment to thank all the staff and all the good people who make this Latino Heritage Month so successful every single year. It's an opportunity for us to highlight how wonderful this great city is, and in this case, we're doing it in two languages, but more importantly, we're actually here in the city of Los Angeles, and we're showing the great work of the city that has been done in our city, and how progressive the city is in saying welcome to all of you, treat everyone with respect, and we're going to do it the same way that we treat the Latino Heritage Month every year. That's what Latino Heritage Month means to me. I don't need to wait for Latino Heritage Month I don't need to wait for Latino Latin Heritage Latin Month to hear Spanish Latin music Latin or Latin eat enchiladas Latin and things of that nature. I grew up all my life doing that, and I, I hope I never stop.
But one of the Pero things that this means to me, it, it reminds me of the days when we didn't exactly celebrate diversity the way we're doing here today. And when you look at Latino Heritage Month in Los Angeles, with the lack of negative incidents, when you look at the Latino Heritage Month, bringing such talent to the city of Los Angeles and taking the opportunity to do wonderful things with it. My mother and father are not here anymore, but our family put together a scholarship fund to give out $80,000 in scholarships. And we made it on purpose to make sure that one of our fundraisers is a Latino Heritage Month in the San Fernando Valley, celebrating the music of the mariachi and making sure that we highlight children every single time. It's a fundraiser, yet at the same time, it's a fundraiser. It's an opportunity to enjoy ourselves and to relish the culture and the heritage of a Mexicano, of a Latino. And it's a wonderful opportunity to see Los Angeles do this every single day for an entire month and then to remind people that it's wonderful to see somebody next to you that doesn't have the same color of your skin, to be in a restaurant and hear somebody speak a different language, to speak a different language, and to admire it and to appreciate it, not to be offended or bothered by it. So that's what Latino Heritage Month means to me. So thank you to all of you who make this possible, Mayor, Council President, and all the wonderful people who put a lot of hard work into making this successful. Thank you. Unfortunately, uh, Senor Alcalde Jaime actually had to leave uh, for another event, and it's unfortunate uh, to attend the funeral. So he's asked me to take over for the rest of the ceremony. I just want to make some, uh, recognize some people and make some, uh, like give out some proclamations. First, I am pleased that the mayor of San Salvador, Carlos Zamora, is here today. He has played a vital role in working to create a sister city program between Los Angeles and San Salvador. I would like to uh, have him up and just say a few words about our relationship. It's an honor for us to have him here today, and I'm thankful that he has come to the council chambers to say a few words. Mayor Samora. Señor Presidente del Concilio, Mr. President of the Council, miembros y miembras del Consejo, members of the Council, para para mí en mi calidad de alcalde de la ciudad de San Salvador, El Salvador, for me uh, being as mayor of the El Salvador, San Salvador, es un verdadero honor, it's a true honor, poder estar ante ustedes precisamente en este momento en que hay Dos declaraciones importantes. To be in front of you, especially at this moment, there are two uh, special presentations. Una de ellas es precisamente el apoyo a los inmigrantes en este gran país. One of them is the great support to the immigrants in this great country. Una, la segunda de ellas es el comenzar el primer día de la celebración de la historia latinoamericana en esta ciudad. The second one is commencing the first day of the uh, history of the uh, Latin history in the American country. Y una tercera es la intención importante de nuestras ciudades de poder suscribir en el futuro un convenio de hermanamiento. And the third one is a, a um, convenient uh, support of the sisterhood of, of the uh, two cities. Lo que recibo con mucho aprecio, porque déjenme contarles que en esta ciudad, ustedes han recibido con mucho aprecio y cariño a más o menos 900 mil salvadoreños. Y nuestra capital apenas tiene 600 mil habitantes. Si habláramos por población, 600 mil. Si estuviésemos hablando de poblaciones, esta sería nuestra primer capital. Por lo tanto, apreciamos mucho la oportunidad que nos dan de poder hermanarnos porque de esa manera verdaderamente podremos tener una relación íntima entre ustedes y nosotros 
haciendo esa transferencia cultural que nos hace comunes. Por lo tanto, agradezco y aprecio la oportunidad que se me ha dado. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Presidente. Gracias, señor alcalde Zamora. Today would not have been possible but for the great sponsors who uh, provided us funds to celebrate our culture, uh, the great support of Daimler Chrysler, the Mayor's Circle title sponsor of Latino Heritage Month 2003. Ooh. I would like to present uh, some awards here today. Yes, First to Chris Chandler, Chris Chandler, Chris Chandler, Seal Gonzalez, Seal and, Gonzalez Patricia and Patricia Romero. While the pictures are being taken, let me thank uh, Mr. Hans, Mr. 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 Padilla, Mr. Reyes, Mr. Garcetti, Mr. Cardenas, and Mr. Villaragosa for making this presentation. All of you who are here with them, not only today, but will be here throughout the month in recognition of Latino heritage. And congratulate those and thank those who are part of it. I believe we have one more presentation. Perdón. Honorada y apreciada, y también invitada por todos los gran países en el área de música, arte. Latinos también haciendo gran en educación, gobierno y la militar. Las oportunidades no siempre son eminentes. Y por eso se ha fundado una operación de la GUM, haciendo negocios y seminarios por toda la comunidad latina y la ciudad de Nueva California. Nuestra meta con este programa es para dar a los latinos las herramientas para hacer sus... Como parte de Daniela Crisis, yo estoy en la hora de presentar este cheque por 250 mil dólares. Como oficial, estos son los del mes de Vince Latino en este mes. Muchas gracias. También me gustaría reconocer que los otros patrocinadores del mes contribuyeron al mes y contribuyeron a la expresión de nuestra cultura en la ciudad de Los Ángeles. Wells Fargo. Delta Airlines. Southern California Gas Company, a separate energy utility. Our great Spanish language newspaper here in Los Angeles, Mignon, Mónica Lozano. Mónica Lozano.
Hispanic Broadcasting Corporation. Corporation. KABC. KABC. Teresa. Univision. Univision. También. Tenet, healthcare, the Garza Group, and uh, Perfect Exposure Gallery. I also wanted to point out that uh, our. Good, uh, Mr. Our honorary chairperson for the month, uh, Juan Gabriel, did not make it here today. Uh, but uh, one of our other honorary chairs, my good friend Tony Plata, is here today. And I'd like to invite him up just to say a couple of words. Tony? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, I am here representing Latinos in the entertainment industry. I've been in the industry for 25 years, and we have, uh, some of us have been lucky enough to make a living in this industry where 95% of our unit is employed. I've been fortunate to uh, perform many dignified roles, but I've also struggled like many, and I've played every stereotype except for the pregnant teenager. I haven't played that yet, but I'm looking forward to it. But I am here to remember all those Latino artists who have struggled for generations to get fair and equal representation in our business. I still look forward to the day when that will happen. I think it's important to remember the contribution of all those artists, theatrical artists, and film artists who have not achieved that uh, representation, but have contributed tremendously to our community. I'm all here representing, representing our young horse program in East Los Angeles, Los Angeles, sponsored by the East LA Classic Theater, which uses actors from Hollywood of all colors to improve the literacy skills in disadvantaged children in four school districts in this county, using theater arts and actors employed to do what they do best to improve the future lives of our children. Thank you very much for this opportunity. In Spanish, which I've been asking for this honor, I'm here to present the artists of Hollywood who have been recognized in many years here and as artists, representatives of our community. I hope to see the day donde logren oportunidades, oportunidades y representación igual y justa. Y también estoy representando el programa eh, de alfabetismo que representamos en este Los Ángeles, que usamos actores de todos colores para mejorar el alfabetismo y las posibilidades educativas para nuestros niños. Gracias por la, el honor hoy. I also want to point out that Tony said he's been in the uh, business for 25 years. I just want to make it clear that he started as a child actor. Uh, but uh, he's been a great leader. I, many of you might know in this room that I actually uh, was the chair of Latino Heritage Month for six years. And Tony was there many, many years. Tony was there every time and didn't waver and was a proud participant in celebrating our wonderful heritage here in Los Angeles. One last note, uh, we have a party for everybody out on the forecourt, food, uh, music, fun, have a good time, celebrate the month, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you again to everyone for participating and bringing that. Yes, Mr. Ria, we're going to just want to announce the president of Dolores Sanchez, the publisher and editor in chief of, of Eastside Publications. Thank you. Welcome.
As soon as we get a little order back in the council chambers, I will be recognizing Council Member Smith for the final presentation today. Um, And if I could ask everyone to maintain order so we can, can get on with city business. Again, if the council can come back to order, we do have some other, uh, one more presentation to make and still some items. Members, let me point out that we have received technical amendments and a substitution for items that have already been on the agenda. So we will ask, be asking for reconsideration of three items to adopt those amendments as well. 118 is one of them. In the items we will be, in fact, why don't uh, we have Mr. Parks make, make a motion for reconsideration of number 92, 106, and 118. Those were items that were already acted on, but there are technical amendments and a substitution for clarification. Um, so if, is there any objection to reconsideration of those items? If not, open the roll. A 92, 106, and 118. Close the roll. The, uh, those matters are before, uh, well, are uh, tabulate the vote. That's 11 ayes. Those matters are now before us. This, we do have substitute motion item 92 and technical amendments on 106 and 118. Ms. Perry? I'm sorry, could Chair recognize Ms. Perry? Could we have Ms. Perry's microphone? Okay, right. thank you. I rise uh, on 106. Uh, uh, the, the motion is for transfer of money from uh, one fund to, to another for the El Grito celebration. All right, that is uh, before us as has been circulated. Designated as 106A. 106A, 92A is a substitute for 92, and 118 is an amendment on 118. Let's consider those technical amendments and open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 10 ayes. All right, that is approved with 10 votes. Um, now let me recognize Mr. Smith and thank you and your guests for both your patience and uh, helping us uh, get a little housekeeping. On August 11th of this year, we had a very severe fire in the Northridge area at the Lassen Village Apartments. Uh, initially, we thought there were five, uh, four or five units that were damaged and families would have to be relocated. After the city got out there and looked at it, it was found that there were 50 apartments that were damaged and 50 families had to be relocated and moved. We, uh, as Americans, are always great people for getting out and helping people in need. We do it all over the world. We also do it here at home. And that's what I want to recognize today is a number of people that stepped forward to assist their fellow residents in the Northridge community at a time of need and disaster. Uh, there was a number of people that stepped forward. First of all, I want to recognize uh, Susan Weiss from the California State University in Northridge. Susan uh, stepped forward and helped get a relocation to some of the housing at the university and also brought forth some uh, individuals to help people move. And so to Susan and the University of Cal State Northridge, I want to present you this resolution and thank you for coming forward and time need for so many people. Also from Cal State Northridge, uh, one of our great fraternity houses there stepped forward. A young man named Chad Charton, who's now the president of the Cal uh, Sigma Chi fraternity there, came forward and helped organize volunteer assistance by helping the people move out of the apartments. Uh, the apartment manager said he himself did the work of 10 people, uh, helping people pack their goods and get out of the apartment building and move to other uh, areas where they could live. So Chad, on behalf of the city, thank you for stepping forward.
Shepherd of the Hills is one of the largest churches in the entire San Fernando Valley. They're always very community spirit. Get involved. I've had the pleasure of working with Paula Christian over there on numerous projects. And when she heard about the problem, she stepped forward uh, on a moment's notice, really, with, the son, with her son Stan, uh, Stephen, and Daniel. And they provided 400 meals for the people who were relocated. To Paula and her family and the church, thank you. One of our great resources in the Valley that you all know very well is uh, Mr. Jim Dunn of the Airtel uh, Hotel, Airtel Plaza. Uh, his managers here today, Bert uh, Seneca, and uh, they helped with providing some housing assistance for people that need to be relocated. And as Jim always does, he opened up his heart, and I thank Jim and the Airtel. Uh, not here with us this morning the church of Los Angeles Church of Christ. They also helped in the housing, and we thank them. And also one of our biggest, probably the biggest charity family in the entire San Fernando Valley. When you ask them to do anything, they pretty well step forward and say, yes, we're happy to help. Uh, and representing Galpin Ford is... Uh, uh, Bo Bachman, uh, one of the great Bachman family, uh, they provided food uh, at the great restaurant, the Hearst's Carriage, over, uh, no, Hearst's Carriage, yeah, Hearst's Carriage, yeah, over at Galpin Ford, thank you. A uh, good friend of mine and a great supporter of the Northridge and North Valley community are not here today, but they also provided food. They're the owners of the Don Ricardo's Rescue of Vic and Sue Sampson, who many of you know, both have served as commissioners with the city of L.A. From the Apartment Association of Los Angeles, step forward, Kevin Singer, who helped uh, get the people in other apartments, helped them get through the processing, uh, the credit checks that are necessary to rent apartments, and the association itself to step forward. And I understand he's also a new father. Congratulations. Uh, if, you, if you want to let us know, we have a daycare center here now, Mrs. Gurul's daycare center. You could have brought the family. Oh, you did. You could have had them, brought them along. But anyway, thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Right. We, we just like, I'd just like to thank two people who came along with me today to accept this award. Uh, Larry Cannizzaro, our, our president of our association, and Al Rebus, one of the board members of our association. And we just want to let all city council members who are still here know that this program is available for you, too, if for some reason you have some type of emergency in, in, your, uh, in your district. Thank you. And also, uh, finally, and last, but last but not least, is Maria Thomas. Maria was the manager of the apartment. Uh, she just stepped forward and did things that are not required of a general of a manager of an apartment, but she just cared so much for the people living there that she got on the scene, she organized everybody's efforts, she made sure that uh, outreach was made and the people were helped and the people got relocated. And to Maria for stepping forward and really caring about the people who live in that apartment building. Maria, thank you so much. also like to thank my um, husband, my daughter, my son, uh, my grandson, who stayed there and watched Barney all day long while this was going on. Um, you just never know what to expect in a situation like this, but everyone has been so great. And I'd also just like to give Councilman Greg Smith and his staff a um, certificate um, in our honor, because when something like this happens, you have no idea what to do, and for people to come forward and give us, I know this is basically what you're here for, but just to know that you did your extra, to keep on in contact with me, and just made it so much easier for me, and I thank you all for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 As all of us who sit around the horseshoe know, um, these kind of certificates don't belong to us. They really belong to the staff who do that. And I want to recognize Nicole Burnson and Jim Dones are my staff, who spearheaded the effort. Jim's back there. Uh, they made it possible. But uh, really, this is an example of community pulling together in time of need. This is what Americans are known for. It's one of our great strengths. I am so proud of the people of the Northridge community that didn't have to be asked to help. They just stepped forward. And those that we did ask said, yes, we'd be happy to help. That is the American way. That's what makes us a great city. That's what makes us a great nation. I'm very proud of these people. And I just wanted them to be here today to uh, okay. receive recognition from the city of L.A. for all that they have done to make this a better situation than was really an ugly situation. So thank you to all of these wonderful people. Uh, we appreciate you all stepping forward. I know the, the poor victims of this fire do appreciate what you did too. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Mr. Smith, Mr. and thank Mr. you for Mr. bringing Mr. all these fine people down here who came forward at a time of need for people who self suffered a very significant tragedy and to let them know that there's this safety net in our communities. That does conclude our um, presentations today. So, Madam Clerk, let's move the agenda. Uh, Mr. Zine? And President, if I can ask that item 23 go forthwith. Item 23, there's request for forthwith. If there's no objection, then item 23 will be forthwith. Uh, Madam Clerk? Uh, uh, item number 11 is confirmation uh, of the appointment of Annie Cho to the Board of Water and Power Commissioners. Commissioners. Commerce, Mr. Energy, Mr. and Natural Mr. Resources Mr. Committee report has been Mr. distributed Mr. to the Council Mr. members. Thank you very much, and uh, Ms. Cho, thank you very much for your patience. It's been a long morning. Uh, colleagues, we do have a uh, reconfirmation of a commissioner before us. Uh, committee report recommending approval. Are there members wishing to be heard? President, I am so honored to have Annie Cho here. Uh, I, I think one of the uh, great opportunities we have is to work with the city commissioners. And when I was chief of staff, Mr. Burns and Annie called immediately upon her appointment. We sat down together. We had a great conversation. She wanted to know, what can I do as your commissioner to make this department run better? We've held a constant ongoing communication about various things in the department. The bonds and I worked on that we're working on the community to help AYSO soccer and baseball. She just really cares about the community. She cares about water and power, making it a good agency. Uh, she's a great commissioner, and I urge her reappointment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Misikowski. <laughs> Ms. Gruel. Thank you. I also would like to stand um, in support of uh, Annie's appointment. She has been a great commissioner, and I know um, she's going to continue to be someone who's going to speak, I think, very loudly about um, how to make DVP operate even more efficiently than it is, and has always been there when we've had press conferences. At one point, we were trying to help let our seniors know that someone who came in a uniform that looked like DVP was, in fact, trying to rob them at one point if they had not um, scheduled an, an actual appointment. And so she was there, came out, and has really been a strong advocate. So look forward to your continued service to the city of Los Angeles. Thank you. Because I know everyone's going to vote yes. <laughs> Other members wishing to be heard? If not, then uh, let's open the roll. Mr. Cárdenas. Hello. Hola. I'd just like to say that uh, just a couple of hours ago, we had a committee hearing on this subject, and uh, I just want to say that so far, we've had nothing but good uh, expectations from you, and you've done a wonderful job so far, and I endorse your uh, reappointment, and uh, after vetting this through, and actually having a wonderful conversation with you as well about the good things and the bad things and the things that need to move forward and improve with DWP, I appreciate your commitment and your willingness to move forward and improve our wonderful organization in all the good ways that you know how to do. So thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to voting for you. Thank you, Council Member. Okay. Other members wishing to be heard at this time? At this time, the roll is open. Madam Clerk, please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 eyes. Congratulations. Thank you. And then thank you for your service to the city. Next item, please. Items 42, 43, and 44 were called uh, special by Council Member Zine. 42 and 43 are communications from ITGS and those are receiving files. And 44 is a contract and it's communication from the CAO. Mr. Zine. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, is there a representative here from IT that can uh, answer a couple of questions I have? Thank you. Dennis Frady, Assistant General Manager, Information Technology Agency. Yeah, the question I have regarding uh, this matter is these uh, companies had agreements with the City of Los Angeles and there were some financial difficulties. And I want to... Uh, find out what we're doing to prevent this from occurring again. So the city's not embarrassed and the uh, subscribers don't suffer any negative consequences. When we have an agreement, we do uh, provide for a number of different performance, uh, uh, performance bond, insurance, uh, liquidated damages, and of course we can always revoke the franchise, and in this case uh, the franchise was in fact terminated. 
Um, as safeguards? far as going, have, what safeguards do we have in place? So, as far as going forward, um, there's uh, we do do the research on these companies and provide uh, our best judgment as to whether or not the company can perform. Uh, uh, the franchise agreement. And how many companies have failed to live up to the expectations? To my knowledge, this is the only one that did not build out. Are there any in the horizon? No, I don't believe so. We do have one overbuilder who's building out up in the Northwest Valley, the, uh, the Tuna Canyon area, uh, but so far there's no indication that they will not be successful. So you believe we have sufficient safeguards in place? Yes. Did you have anything to add? Mr. City Attorney, <laughs> who works 24 hours a day. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Phil Lamb, Deputy City Attorney, General Counsel for ITA. I think that's a very insightful policy question to look out for the citizens of LA. Um, I think in the context of bankruptcy, it is uh, the municipalities' hands are kind of tied because bankruptcy is exclusively federal jurisdiction. And in that, in that sense, our hands are kind of tied. Well, I know that uh, with the uh, one that's on the agenda, there was a debate, there was approval, uh, and then subsequent to that, there was the situation with Adelphia, which created more anguish and more problems for the city of Los Angeles, including debts that were paid that owed to the city of Los Angeles. I just want to make sure that as this operation continues and we go from the cable industry to direct and to the other operations, which we really don't have control over, the federal government does, that we assure our consumers that they are going to we have reliable transmission and that the city won't be in jeopardy when these contracts are signed so there's no sufficient safeguards in place. I know that sometimes businesses suffer consequences, but how sufficient is that business and how effective is it carrying out the mandate when we sign that agreement? Because there's obviously a lot of competition in that arena. Well, I think there are two components to it. One is the business side, one is the legal. The business judgment is what uh, Mr. Frady referred to is the, the ITA using the best business judgment to determine whether this is a good new franchise applicant or not. Uh, from, this, from the city side, we have sufficient safeguards for our financial um, exposure, such as in this case, Winfrey. I understand we had, at the time, $29 million performance bond. In addition to that, $10 million insurance plus liquidated damages and also parent companies guarantee. So financially speaking, the, the city is well protected. Um, in the in the consumer side, that is really the, another contract the consumer has with the cable company. And in the case of bankruptcy, the U.S. Attorney, excuse me, the U.S. Trustee would manage the uh, the interest of, in this case, unsecured creditors. All the subscribers would become unsecured creditors, and their maximum exposure would be one month of the bills, assuming that they paid on the first day, and then the next day the, bank, the cable company filed for bankruptcy. So that would be the maximum financial exposure the subscribers have, um, and that's under the contract. And our contract under the franchise is really with the, for the cable company, and which is really a, a right of way that the company would use in exchange for franchise um, uh, fees. In addition to that uh, financial contractual relationship, the city does have, under the 1984 Cable Act, a certain regulatory power regulating customer services, but those are all non-monetary, non-financial side of it. I just have one final question. Yes. Did the city lose any money on this deal with Winfrey? No, it's my understanding that uh, we were paid some money up front. I'm sorry, I don't have the number, but no, the city lost no money. I would just like to add, in this case, they were an overbuilder, which meant there were um, companies already providing service in those areas, so the risk was viewed as, as less than it might have had they been an original uh, company. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Other members wishing to be heard on this item? Or these items, I should say? Seeing none, uh, Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Okay, that dispenses with items 42, 43, and 44. Next item, please. Item number 45 was called special by Council Member Labanche. Mr. Labanche. I yield to the great council of the ninth district. Thank you, Mr. Labonge. Yes, Mr. Labonge. <laughs> He's uh, indisposed right now. Um, I uh, appreciate Mr. Yeah, Labonge's enthusiasm yes, for all of Los Angeles. Los Angeles. And uh, we will be announcing yeah, formally in a press conference in the formation of a historic city-county uh, CRA private sector partnership the Joint Powers Authority, which will focus on developing Grand Avenue as a vibrant, exciting, accessible cultural corridor for all people of Los Angeles and an end stage destination with new job opportunities, mixed income housing, new places to work, and places to take your family and enjoy. So that was the purpose of this uh, motion today, and I ask for an I vote and uh, hope for a unanimous vote. Thank you. Other members wishing to be heard on item 45? Seeing none, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Uh, Mr. President, I believe Mr. Zine wanted to reconsider item number 44. Mr. Zine. 42 and 43 were connected, and 44 is a separate item. So I'd like to just uh, have 44 reconsidered. I have a couple questions on that separate from the other ones that we've approved. Okay. Uh, members, motion to reconsider item 44. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Item 44 is now back before us. Mr. Zine. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, regarding this matter, do we have staff? that can address a question regarding the contract. There's an extension, I understand, on this particular contract. And if I calculate out the dollars, uh, originally it was like $35,000, and if we calculate this out for six months, it would be a total of $70,000. Can you clarify the dollar value of this particular extension of the contract? Uh, it's 35000 I'm sorry, Borough Taylor of CEO, 35000 for June to December for fiscal 03, 04. So according to the numbers, to extend this contract out, the sixth the extension is for 35,000 yes. for six months, yes. but for 12 months, it was 40,900 for 12 months. So if, we, if for 12 months it was 40,000, and we're doing six months for 35,000, there's a dispute with those numbers. Um, In other words, a six-month project is uh, almost as much as we did for a 12-month project. That's the question. Um, it's a not to exceed amount, and um, it depends on the work that the contractor does. So there isn't a fixed amount per year. It depends on how much work the contractor um, puts into the project. Well, this extension is for six months, as I understand. Yes. And is it per month? No. Or for the six-month period? It's for, for the six-month period, not to extend, not to exceed $35,000. But when we had the contract for a year, the total was 40000 We've had the contract for almost three years. It started in July, and over the period of the contract, it's been a total of um, 122000 over three years, the form of the previous three years. So the, my question is on this particular six-month period of time. Yes. Why are we paying 35000 for six months? when the previous when contract, the contract was 40,000 for 12 months. For those meses. Um, In other words, why are we, why are we paying so much more for a short period of time? Period of time? You can answer if you, if you well, wish. Sir, sir. You don't have to whisper to her. <laughs> we'll take your statement. Could you give us a minute, please? Sure. Mm -hmm. And I'm only using the numbers we that were numbers. provided to me. Up to Yes. <clears throat> Council member, the, the $35,000 figure is an up-to amount. 
Terry Sauer, CAO staff, the $35,000 really is a, is a cap on the contract. We pay the contractor based on the work that they do. So in, in the case of the six months, um, it, not all that money might be expended. It was just to, to provide funding for a, a finite period. If there's work for the conservator, they come in and provide services to cultural affairs. If they don't need the services during that period, then there would be no expenditure of funds. And this is done by cultural affairs. They that's correct. This is specifically to maintaining the Watts Towers, and because of the unique character of the Watts Towers and uh, the, the specific types of things they need to do to maintain the monument, um, Cultural Affairs has this person on staff if there are if there's damage, if there's specific issues related to conservation. And it, anything else I would have, any, any other details relating to specifically how often they use this person, I would have to do, defer to Cultural Affairs, but I don't believe they're here. And how does this compare to what we had in the previous three-year contract, this extension of six months? The, the extension, I, I believe the, the $35,000 figure was to provide monies during the RFP period and $35,000 was a number that the department believed would be sufficient. Um, in terms of the expenditure patterns for the past years or the, the total $120,000, we can get that information and provide it to your staff, but I don't have it with me. If you would, please. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Okay, uh, seeing no more speakers, uh, that concludes discussion on this item. Let's, uh, Madam Clerk, open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Okay, that, that matter passes. Next item on our agenda, please, Madam Item number 116 was called special in as much as there are cards from the public. Mr. President, this is an item that is a mandatory public hearing. I'm going to move a 10-minute public hearing uh, so that we can hear the people who are here who have remained. I think they're divided into those who support the motion and those who oppose it. So uh, if, without objection, I would like to move the 10-minute public hearing. Okay, without objection, we will have a 10-minute public hearing. Uh, members of the public, I have a number of cards here on the item. I'm going to call the names on the cards uh, in the item. In the, in the the order in which I've received them, I'd ask that you um, please uh, be aware of when you're on deck and when you're in hold so that when it's your turn to speak, you are ready. The first speaker will be Denny Schneider, followed by uh, a representative of what appears to be the Westport Homeowners Association, who didn't put a name down, representing Westport Heights. Uh, that will be followed by uh, Mahalo Walter, to be followed by Kurt Curtis. Um, so I'm going to uh, uh, give the number of cards here, uh, enforce the time limits, and ask each of you to confine your remarks to one minute. And Mr. Schneider, Schneider, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, I just want to, as uh, Vice President of RSAC, the Alliance for Regional Solution Airports, you have congested. What we are trying to do, and, and this and supporting Cindy, uh, we really appreciate the fact that you're going to wait until you determine what the plan for LAX will be before you spend the money. That's the real crux of the issue. And you've got to wait. If you read the EIR, it still has all kinds of options in there, and the master plan, I should say. And so I would urge you to determine who you're going to pick for doing the development work after you find out what you're going to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schneider. We're going to hear from the Westport Homeowners Association representative, followed by Mahalo Walter, followed by Kurt Curtis, followed by Eleanor Holm. My name is Doug Ehlers. Uh, I am um, a 52-year resident of Westchester. I represent the uh, Westport Heights Osage Neighbors uh, Association. And uh, that's the area it's from Sepulveda all the way to uh, Englewood, about uh, 50 uh, to 100 uh, residents. Uh, we support uh, uh, Cindy's uh, motion and hope that everyone else will volunteer here, too. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Mahalo Walter to be followed by Kurt Curtis, Eleanor Holm, and then Myra Krawinik. I'm sorry. Krawinik. I am sorry. Krawinik. 
As a former airport commissioner, I'm asking the city council to vote yes on this motion. If consultants had done their job properly in the first place, there wouldn't be so many questions about alternate D. Why do cons consultants not stand up and answer their own questions on the design? And why send Wawa people out to face the public? Let's start with the underground luggage tunnel. The construction is due to 2005 with many safety features recommended by FAA for runway and taxiway safety are not scheduled for completion until 2015. What about the under underground? luggage tunnel. Is there going to be one or not? And where does it run? Last year I warned a couple of congressional representatives and Nate Holden that our own crazies could put timers on bombs and send the luggage into the CTA and not even have to commit suicide. Now you union people, do you really want your union brothers and sisters to work there? And by the way, what makes you think you're getting the job? Time and time again, I objected to some subcontractors coming in from out of state to do the work. You know, proponents like to catch the whole Sereno around the security as cars and LAX facilities don't mix. Now I tell you, do you think the people are, how are they going to get to the ground transportation centers? And what if a terrorist was really wanting to inflict major damage and loss of life? Where rather would you rather have the passenger load distributed? Right, widely around eight different terminals or where everyone on all flights congregate at one check-in drop-off? Ma'am, if I could ask you to conclude just because we have other speakers and it's a limited amount of time for this public hearing. Sounds like a Disneyland attraction to me to use automated people mover to move uh, funnel people and travelers and meters and greeters into 200 additional businesses proposed by the mayor, shifting the money from excess business and Thank benefiting. You. May I put this in the record, please? We will take your statement for the record, and we appreciate it. The time limit was set by our previous vote. Thank I'm, you, ma'am. I, I plan for three minutes. <laughs> Well, thank you for your understanding. We will accept your statement for the record, and we appreciate your participating. Kurt Curtis, Eleanor Holm, Myra Kerwanek, Patricia Hamilton. My name is Kurt Curtis. I'm a former airport commissioner, and I'm a 50-year resident of uh, Westchester. I'm an official representative of the Westchester Vitalization Corp, and they made a motion which was passed 17 to nothing uh, with one abstention, the airport uh, representative, that we thank and commend uh, Councilwoman Cindy Miskowski and for bringing this item before the City Council and to give her our full support. We feel that it is presumptuous and arrogant on the part of the Airport Commission to try and circumvent the EIR process by passing an RFP when they don't even know what it's going to be. I have received calls from the Commission office, the Mayor's office, and LAWA. Some of the comments were, oh, this is not a fast track, but it will cut four to six months off of the flow time. Now, I never got an answer when I asked how an airport commissioner could get up at a hearing in Westchester and speak in favor of $10 billion going to union jobs. When I was on the commission, it was totally uh, wrong for any of us to express opinions. Sir, if I could just ask you to conclude, and we'll take your statement for the record. Okay. No, you, sir, you can, you can sum up if you'd like, sir. Mr. Curtis, if you want to just make a summation, we'd love to hear it, and we'll accept your written statement for the record. I strongly urge you to uh, pass Cindy's motion. I think that it's necessary. I think it was wrong for them to pass a, a similar RFP relative to the moving the runways further apart. Thank you, sir. Eleanor Holm, to be followed by Myra Kowanek, Patricia Hamilton, and Dale Christ. I'm a resident of Westchester, and I'm here to support uh, Cindy Miskowski's motion. And I want you to know that since Cindy has been in our uh, district, we have been very happy with her, and uh, she has gained a lot of respect in our community. She listens to the people. She does her homework, as everyone knows. She has a very experienced staff. And I want you to know that if um, you will support this motion, you will know that you're doing the right thing. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Myra Krawanek, Patricia Hamilton, Dale Christ. Good afternoon. I am Myra Kriwanek, and I'm a board member of the Neighborhood Council of Westchester Playa del Rey. 
I'm also the chair of the Public Safety Committee of the Neighborhood Council, and I'm here this morning, or I'm sorry, the afternoon now, as a 20-year resident of Westchester in support of my councilperson, Cindy Misikowski, who has gained our community's respect in addressing the concerns of the new LAX plan. You can be assured that we are extremely concerned about safety and security living next to LAX. However, there are some flaws in the Mayor Hahn's new plan that need time and attention, not more of our taxpayers' money. Therefore, we do not want to spend the money before the plan is approved. I hope to see us support the City Council's Public Safety Chair in her motion today. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Patricia Hamilton to be followed by Dale Christ. Greetings, council members. I'm here for yes on motion 00174, Ms. Sikowski Fidela. Technology for the future cannot be predicted at this time. So the cost involved to build a new airport plan cannot be estimated today. It is only a rough estimate. The RAND Corporation and the airlines have given some excellent information for modernizing security at the airport. Nine years and millions of dollars have already been spent on an unpractical plan without taking into consideration the big picture, a regional solution. To enlarge LAX on the small and confined acreage including off-site check-in facilities in this metropolitan area should not be an option. For serious safety, security, efficiency, and convenience, the city of Los Angeles should follow the lead of other major cities in the United States, Europe, and Asia by using larger acreages outside of their metropolitan areas. Los Angeles already owns a larger acreage in Palmdale and Ontario. These airfields should be developed and enlarged with connecting metro link rail transportation. Systems to accommodate the new mega jumbo jets that will hold 55 plus passengers that are already being built. I urge you to vote yes on 001774. Thank you. Perfect timing. Thank you, ma'am. Our last speaker, Dale Christ. I would like to ask if it would be possible to defer my time to Dick Slauson. Certainly. Thank you. Mr. Slauson. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and Council. I'm Richard Slauson with the Los Angeles and Orange County Building and Construction Trades Council. The individuals that are here with me today all wanted to speak. Uh, we are speaking against the motion. Uh, this is not fast track. We have been going through this process for eight years. We believe that the RFP that would uh, go out from the airport commission would give us the information that we need to move forward on the airport and alternate D. It is not possible to make uh, accurate decisions on what will happen at the airport unless we have the information. This does not, an RFP does not uh, establish a cost to the city until that RFP comes back and the council would still at that time have the ability to make a determination whether they wanted to move forward or not. We are opposed to the motion and would like to see the RFP move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Slauson. That, uh, thank you, Mr. Chris. We will close the uh, public debate. The chair now recognizes Ms. Misikowski. Mr. President, I am going to ask that we continue this matter until Tuesday. We are down to a bare quorum of 10 members, and others have indicated to me that they need to leave in the immediate near future. So we've, had, we've heard from the public. We don't need to have the public hearing on Tuesday. Uh, so my motion is to continue the matter. Okay. Do I see a second to the motion to continue the matter? Motion has been made. Seconded. Uh, no speakers left on the queue. Let's vote on the motion to continue the matter until Tuesday. Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Nine eyes, one no. Okay, that matter is continued until Tuesday. Next item, please. Item number 126 is called Social Council Member Mr. Zine. 
Thank you. Uh, yes, item number 126. It's the uh, <coughs> public convenience of necessity for alcohol sales off site consumption on Fallbrook. And I would ask that we deny this. I don't believe at this particular time there's a necessity for public convenience of alcohol at this location, which is under renovation. Uh, we've had some crime problems, some other associated problems with the redevelopment at that site. Uh, I want to deny without prejudice there will be an opportunity to reapply through the appropriate process, but I would ask that we deny at this particular time on item number 126. So, Mr. Zine, that is your motion to deny? Yes, uh, Mr. President. Is there a second for Mr. Zine's motion? Ms. Gruel seconds Mr. Zine's motion. That matter is now before us. Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Matter is approved. Next item. Item number one. Mr. Zine's motion, motion is approved. Item number 127 is also public convenience or necessity, and that's for the Council District 11. A motion is required. Okay. Uh, item 127 is in Council District 11. Council District 11, yes, item 127, is uh, in Council District 11 and requires a motion. I will move approval of the uh, motion to approve necessity and convenience. This is just a minor shift uh, of an existing market moving the next lot over, so my motion is to approve. Okay, Ms. Misikowski moves. Is there a second? Ms. Gruel once again seconds that motion. And let's open the roll on the motion. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. That matter is approved. Yes, Madam Clerk, next item. This is the time for comments from the public on items not on Council's agenda. Okay. Okay, we have no okay, not comment the cards from the public, so that closes the public comment period for this meeting. Colleagues, do you have any announcements? Council has motions for posting and referral. Those motions are posted and referred. There are excuses on the desk. Council members, I requested the excuse Friday, October 17th, and Wednesday, October 22nd and 24th for city business. Those meet council policy. Okay, Mr. Zine is excused. Council Member Garcetti requests to be excused Tuesday, September 16th for city business that also meets council policy. Mr. Garcetti is excused. Council Member Smith requests to be excused Friday, September 19th to arrive at 1045 for city business that meets council policy. He is likewise excused. Council Member Perry requests to uh, leave early September 16th to arrive late on September 17th and to be excused for Wednesday, September 24th, which is the offsite. Those are all for city business. Excuses grant. And that clears the desk, Mr. President. Colleagues, do we have any announcements? Mr. LeBonge, followed by Ms. Gruel. I yield to Ms. Gruel, the great councilwoman of the second district. Thank you, Mr. LeBonge. I just want to, for those of you that are watching, tomorrow we um, are having a grand opening of a Starbucks in San Matanga, which is a, a big deal for our community up there in economic development. And uh, anyone who comes and purchases uh, something there tomorrow, a percentage of that purchase will go to Sunland Elementary School. So it starts at 11 o'clock. Um, I hope that uh, those of you that are watching will attend and uh, really support a new economic development engine in our community up there on Foothill Boulevard. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Gruel. Mr. LeBange. I thank you. There's many things happening throughout. The city this weekend is Sunday is a lot of great art activities in the 4th District in Toluca Lake. The art fair will be on Riverside Drive. We welcome everyone there out in the West Wilshire area, Park La Brea. We'll have uh, Art in the Park at Park La Brea, which everyone will be welcomed as well. And then the Celebrity Center in Hollywood, the Church of Scientology on Ivar, Mr. Garcetti's district. We'll be having an event for art on Sunday. So art's a big day every day, but a very special day this coming Sunday. I'd like to invite everyone to come out and enjoy and attend those events. Art is important.
Thank you, Mr. LeBonge. Mr. Mr. Parks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have uh, two events I'd like to uh, 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 bring to your attention. Uh, on the Arlington Avenue the Neighborhood Arlington Watch will be hosting their annual uh, 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 block party Saturday, uh, September 13th from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. The event will be on Arlington Avenue between Southwest Drive and 62nd, 67th Street. Uh, on Saturday. Also, on Monday, uh, the Rita Walters Learning Rita Complex uh, will celebrate his first uh, anniversary. Uh, there will be a ceremony at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, September the 15th at 915 West Manchester. Thank you, Mr. Parks. Mr. Zine. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, tomorrow, the, uh, Third District Community Posse will be fanning out in the Third District, marking abandoned cars and identifying uh, quality of life issues. So if you have an abandoned car in the Southwest Valley, should remove it before tomorrow morning. The Posse comes by and takes care of it for you. Thank you. Watch out for the Posse tomorrow in the Third District. Any other announcements, colleagues? Seeing no hands. Adjourning motions, colleagues. Call, please rise. Mr. Garcetti, did you Garcetti indicate? Tiene. Mr. Le, Mr. Labange? Mr. Labange. Pero Which, uh, uh, members, I think uh, we're all shocked to hear that John Ritter passed. John Ritter, an actor, 54 years old. And it's ironic. Uh, he, uh, he passed right when Hollywood High School, the school that he attended, is having their 100th anniversary celebration tomorrow night. I know he was one of their many uh, great graduates. Uh, he was the son of uh, a great uh, songwriter and uh, uh, of uh, note. He had five children, I believe, and he went to work yesterday in Burbank and uh, Water Brothers. He didn't feel well and was taken rushed to St. Joseph's Hospital, uh, where tragically he passed. He was surrounded by his family. Uh, he died on, the, on his birthday of his, of his daughter, his youngest daughter, Stella. On that, I ask that we adjourn in memory of John Ritter, who really was a fun actor, uh, as we all remember Three's Company and Cooperman and all his work uh, that he did. John Ritter was 54 years old. I also like to ask that we uh, adjourn in memory of Johnny Cash, Johnny Cash, known as the Man in Black, who uh, was 71. He truly was an inspiration to American music, to country music in so many ways. I had the pleasure when I was 17 to shake his hand as he came off the stage at the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, all his music that he created, he got to the soul of people. Uh, I truly believe, and he also was very instrumental in the transformation of uh, folk music to country music when he had his show, the Johnny Cash show, uh, invited Bob Dylan to come down, and, and Nashville Skyline was Bob Dylan's most uh, current album uh, at the time where they sang a, a duet on that song, and Johnny Cash, who truly uh, was an inspiration, his preceded in death by his wife, June Carter Cash. Uh, I would like to ask that we adjourn in memory of the great Johnny Cash. Mr. Garcetti. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And um, I have an adjourning motion today, colleagues. I hope that you will join me in uh, Pat McOsker from uh, UFLAC. Uh, was kind enough to pass on uh, for the council for Bill Schonberg, Sean Bourne, sorry, excuse me. And I ask that we adjourn for, in honor of this uh, retired fire captain, Bill Sean Bourne, who passed away on June 23rd of this year. He served on the Los Angeles City Fire Department for over 30 years as a dedicated public servant who always put the needs of citizens and complete strangers well ahead of his own safety and comfort, like so many of our firefighters. He fought some major, well-publicized fires in Bel Air and Watts. He was always especially proud to have been a member of the crew that laid down the first foam blanket on a runway in LAX in preparation for an emergency landing of a commercial airliner. Bill is best remembered, though, by two generations of firefighters for tireless work that he did over 40 years to organize rank-and-file LAFD uh, fighters into a local union. Bill was one of the true founding fathers of the United Firefighters of Los Angeles City Local 112 of the IAFF. 
He served also as the Firefighters Union President here in Los Angeles during eight quite difficult years during the tumultuous 1960s. And his battles and accomplishments were many, along the way helping to improve public safety in Los Angeles and bettering the lives of firefighters and their families. For instance, he fought successfully to maintain firefighter pay and benefit parity with police officers at a time when some in city government were eager to abandon that principle of putting all of our public uh, uh, safety officers in the same line. He will always be loved by LAFD firefighters for that move. But the single most significant uh, victory that Bill Schongorn achieved for LAFD firefighters was the reduction of their work schedule from 62 hours per week down to the current 56 hours per week. Before Bill's work week reduction, each firefighter in Los Angeles was forced to work six extra days per year above and beyond the regular platoon duty schedule without pay. Captain Bill Sean Byrne will be sorely missed by an aging generation of LAFD firefighters who knew and who loved him, but even more to the point, he is now and will always be deeply appreciated by a new generation of firefighters, men and women who still benefit today from his trailblazing uh, ethics, his courage, his dedication, his leadership, and his brotherly love. May he rest in peace. Mr. Parks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have a, uh, four adjourning motions, and Ms. Perry will second these. Uh, first of all, Bernice Smith, the mother of uh, James A. Smith, who is our Postmaster General of the L.A. District, passed away uh, Saturday, September the 6th. Funeral services <coughs> and interment will be held in Graceville, Florida on Saturday, September the 13th. Uh, also on uh, during in memory of Milton Garden, who passed away on September the 8th. He served as both city and county commissions as well as numerous state commissions and boards. He's very active in the Jewish community, always worked to help create a better life uh, for all funeral service to be held on Friday, September the 12th at Hillside Memorial. Also, uh, journey in memory of Marie Foster, a civil rights activist who helped launch the Selma, Alabama voting rights movement, passed away at age 85 on Saturday, September the 6th. She was also one of the founders of the National Voting Rights Museum uh, and Institute in Selma, Alabama, and worked on an exhibition reflecting history of the voting rights struggle. She was born in uh, rural Alabama and raised in Selma, and has been an activist on a variety of civil rights issues. Uh, she leaves uh, uh, her son and daughter. And also, uh, finally, a, a journey in memory of Ernestine and uh, Dillard Cross, uh, who's a resident of the 8th District. Uh, she uh, is a longstanding constituent. She's a 25-year employee of the County of Los Angeles, passed away at age 56 on Thursday, September the 4th. She was born uh, August 28, 1947 in Salt Lake City. She moved to Los Angeles at the age of three. She began her career as an elementary school teacher at 37th Street Elementary School and began her professional career at the County of Los Angeles Department of Probation in McLaren Hall where she uh, continued with the Department of Children and Family Services. Uh, she leaves uh, a host of relatives. Mr. President, I just saw the Milt Gordon, I'd like to add uh, my name and also add the name of Janice Hahn. He was a great friend of uh, the Hahn family and also a great friend of John Ferraro, Milt Gordon. Colleagues, I'll note that I've been asked by our mayor, Jim Hahn, to mention to all of you uh, how much he and his family uh, are saddened by the passing of Milt Gordon. And as well, I was asked by our colleague Janice Hahn to also note her feelings. Uh, the motion uh, to adjourn in memory of Milt Gordon will be uh, presented by the entire council. Ms. Perry. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I want to adjourn in memory of former Los Angeles Superior Court presiding Judge William P. Hogaboom, who died of heart failure at the age of 84 years old on Sunday, August 24, 2003. He was appointed to the court in 1968 by then Governor Ronald Reagan and served until 1983. After retiring from the court, he became the first general counsel at the University of Southern California, where he remained until 1989 and then became active in private judging. He also served on the boards of the Western Justice Center and Constitutional Rights Foundation and as president for the latter. Funeral services were held in Pasadena on Friday, August 29th at the Western Justice Center. He is survived by his wife, Catherine, two sons and two daughters. I want to adjourn in memory of John Melville Burgess, the first African-American Episcopal Bishop 
in the United States who died at the age of 94 years old on Sunday, August 24, 2003. As bishop, he was known for his inclusive agenda of bringing people of color together and uh, disadvantaged peoples into the church. The right Reverend Burgess was born in Grand Rapids, Michigan, earned his bachelor's and master's degrees from the University of Michigan and graduated from the Episcopal Theological School in Cambridge, Massachusetts in 1934. The following year, he was ordained. In 1961, he was elected to serve as assistant bishop of the state diocese, began his ministry in Massachusetts as archdeacon of Boston's mission and parishes and superintendent of the Boston City Mission from 1956 to 1962. And in 1969, he was elected to the as 12th Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Massachusetts from where he retired in 1975. My final adjourning motion is for Andrew Hale, born in, on August 21st, 1909, and passed away at the age of 93 years old on Tuesday, September 2nd, 2003. On January 25th, 1932, he married Maddie Ethel, who passed away in 1955, leaving behind Mr. Hale and their 12 children. He lived an exemplary life by raising and nurturing the children and survived all of that while being a single parent. For 52 years, he worked two jobs as a laborer, and upon retirement, he became a self-employed gardener. He was a Prince Hall Mason and a man of great principle who will be missed by many. He is survived by six daughters, four sons, three daughters-in-law, two sons-in-law, nine grandsons, 11 granddaughters, one brother, several great-grandchildren, and a host of friends and relatives. Thank you, Ms. Perry, and I'd like to serve as a second on your motion for Judge Hogaboom. He was a, a wonderful judge. Any additional adjourning tributes, colleagues? On behalf of our colleague, Mr. Reyes, I'd like to ask all of you to join me and him at a journey in memory of Catherine Chung, a longtime resident and icon of Los Angeles Chinatown, who passed away at the age of 98 recently. In the 1930s, Catherine Chung became the nation's first licensed female Asian American aviator, uh, having been born in China in 1904 and immigrating to the US in 1921. She was a professional daredevil and eventually joined with Amelia Earhart's group, the International 99s Club for Women Pilots, and later the American Aviation Association. Her name's been enshrined at the Smithsonian as the nation's first female Asian aviator, uh, and has also been, she's also renowned in Beijing in their aviation museum as China's Amelia Earhart. Finally, colleagues, I'd like to ask that you join me in a journey in memory of a true leader of the Jewish community in Los Angeles, Fred Court passed away at the age of 80. Uh, Mr. Court uh, had been a survivor uh, of the Holocaust, uh, having survived the death camp at Treblinka, and uh, arrived in America penniless in 1947, went on to found uh, an extraordinarily successful company, the Imperial Toy Corporation, and most notably, however, went on to uh, uh, achieve his prominence in the Jewish community by his tremendous works of philanthropy. Uh, he uh, donated generously to numerous charities, uh, was appointed an honorary ambassador to the Tel Aviv Foundation, uh, and was the first Holocaust survivor to join with Steven Spielberg in supporting the Shoah Visual History, Visual History Foundation. Mr. Court will be missed by many of us in the LA Jewish community. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Meeting is adjourned.